lifestyle. Sports cards and we live now. Jeremy Lee in the building and every guest that you ever needed. Sports cards after hours keep the hobby heated. Updates hobby talk like you never seen it. Sports cards live and nothing could ever beat it. Sports cards is a lifestyle. Sports cards and we live now. Welcome to another episode of Sports Cards Live with your host, Jeremy Lee. All right, guys, what is up? Welcome to episode number 224 of Sports Cards Live. It is Saturday night, April the 20th, 2024. My name is Jeremy Lee. I would like to thank everyone who tuned in last Saturday for our episode with Kurt from Kurt's Card Care. And I want to thank everybody for tuning in every week. Next Saturday and the Saturday after that, no episode of Sports Cards Live. I will be at the Toronto Expo next Saturday, and I will be at the Edmonton Expo the Saturday after that, but we will be back on May the 11th. But don't fear, tomorrow night, we have the PWCC Weekly Hockey Show with Josh Madigan from the Hockey Cards Gong Show joining me here on the channel. Always a fun episode. I would like to ask you to please download the Center Stage app on iOS or Android. For quick and accurate comps, card identification, and they've launched their marketplace. So please join me in supporting the great team they have and the innovation they're undertaking at Center Stage app. Also, use protection, practice safe swaps. Veriswap is an app and middleman service that lets you securely trade cards through the mail, insured up to a million dollars. Download the Veriswap app on iOS and Android and join me and founder Raymond Lee on Instagram Live every second Tuesday or so for what we call the Veriswap Trade Desk. We have a lot of fun. We go over some of the trades that recently occurred on the platform and ask you which side you would have preferred. Also, Filth Bomb Breaks offers live case and box breaks, and they do so with responsibility and integrity. If you enjoy group breaks and are looking for a professional company to break with, check out Filth Bomb streaming on Fanatics on four channels, seven days a week. I'd like to also shout out HobbyNewsDaily.com. Check it out for your daily dose of hobby information. And Leighton Sheldon from Just Collect will be joining us tonight for the Vintage Spotlight. And if you value transparency, accuracy, and consistency in card grading, please visit taggrading.com. And yes, I'm again wanting to thank all loyal viewers, listeners, podcast subscribers, YouTube subscribers, everybody who follows SCL anywhere. Thank you so much for your ongoing support. And if you're not yet subscribed, please take a moment and do so. Let's get to tonight's show no introduction really for the guests you've seen them all on the show before we have one with us so far to kick it off le cartel the sports card cartel is joining uh, just, us on the show what's just a moment jeremy uh just a few more flips in the so okay all right uh that looks good all right what, yes what were you, pray tell what were you doing there mr cartel uh well jeremy um First and foremost, it is a honor and a pleasure to be joining you on April 20th, 420. Uh, 420, and, um, 420. It, it, it wouldn't be a cartel episode if I didn't lead off with some poetry. Is, is that all right? That is all right. Before you do, I just want to I just want to let everybody know we do have a few other people joining us. They are not here yet, but they are coming. But I'm I'm actually really happy this worked out well because we can get a little bit of cartel action in here before we we dilute the overall screen with everybody else. But yes, please let's start out. Let's and let's hear right, your poetry. Me. I can only imagine what's about to what I'm about the, to hear. The poetry is not just for you, Jeremy. I'm I'm involving our other guests as well because right. the cartel is all inclusive, as everybody knows. Are we ready? Ready, sir. Soak in my cards in some juice. Sports cards live. We're about to get loose. Jeremy Lee, Mikey, Sam, and the cartel gonna puff, puff, pass. And take you hobby heroes and hosers to class. Thank you. Well written. You are you are quite the, uh, the, the poet right there, Mr. Cartel. I greatly appreciate that. Um, Listen, and welcome to the show. We're going to, I want to, let's go. We got lots of comments already. The people are here. I can see from the comments, they are excited for the expo. So let's say hello to Jacob Dahl. What's going on, Jacob? Barry Ma will be at the expo at the Com C booth. Stooks is here. Good evening. Daniel P, welcome to the show. Webo2 says five more sleep. Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. Tuesday till I travel to Toronto. The fifth sleep for the show. Cannot wait. Jeff McMahon, what is going on? Todd McDonald is here. The Cardboard Corner. Good evening. 
Chad Shipper will be flying into the Toronto Expo from, I believe, Florida. That's awesome, Chad. Can't wait to see you at the Expo. What's up, YK? What is going on? 86 is here, says, let's go Bruins. That's not going to fly well with you, Mr. Cartel. No, no. Your Leafs are, they're down 4 nothing right now, the Leafs, to the Bruins. Um, yikes for all of our Toronto Maple Leaf fans, but it is a seven-game series. Mr. Santucci, what is going on? Phil is here, the loud collector. Also, the YouTube channel by that name. Five more sleeps. He says, Robert Scott, good evening. Mikey, I see you. We'll bring you on in a moment. LGC, what is going on? Finger snaps for Cartel. There you go. Mookie likes your shirt, likes the Wu-Tang shirt. And Josh from 90s Auctions is letting us know that he will be at the Expo. Josh, I did not know that. I'm very excited to see you there. That is awesome be coming up from Chicago. Lots of Americans coming up to the show. Mark Santucci is cheering on for the Leafs there. Cartel, very good, very good. Let's bring Mikey Singer on. He's with us now. Mikey, you ready? Give me a thumbs up. Mikey, you ready? He can't even hear me. Uh oh Or he's frozen. We'll leave him for now. We'll leave him until he uh, until I get a signal from him. Let's uh let's let's chat. Okay, first of all, I just alluded to the hockey game. So, play NHL playoffs started today they started today carolina won game they, they they took down game one against the and for some reason it's i'm blanking on who they beat uh, the islanders they beat the, the islanders. islanders three to one and now last i checked before we went live the boston bruins were beating the toronto maple leafs four to nothing so uh that's kind of typically what happens here at this time of year the leafs tend to not get out of the first round uh, Aton, how what do you how do you feel about that? What where, where are you what are you thinking? I actually think uh losing the first game is 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 kind of good news. It, it it's not it's not adhering to the leaf standard of starting out hot and then letting us all down. Um look, it's the built-in storyline every year in the playoffs is uh, are the Maple Leafs going to get out of the first round? Every year it's the same thing. You hear the chatter at the expo as well where everyone believes this is the year. At this point you just got to take it as it comes. You got to kind of you got to relax, try to enjoy the first round instead of just feel all that tension and pain and stress. And like I said, I think I think this is a positive. I think getting uh, getting pounded out in the first game might be a positive thing. That being said, Jeremy, as a, as a typical kind of a Leafs fan, I have ordered my Frederick Anderson Canes jersey. It's on the way. Hopefully I'll get it before uh, from Amazon before the expo and go Canes go. You know, it is. It, it, it's I have to think that you Leaf fans are kind of conditioned and and now you're already you're going into the playoffs this year very much protecting yourself emotionally, mentally, because you know that it just typically doesn't work out for the for the Leafs. And that, that I guess that's that's OK, uh, because you guys know. And now if they can get past that first round and beat the Boston Bruins, you guys will have a lot to cheer for. Now, I'm I'm rooting for the Leafs. I want to see because I want to see the expo a week from now be, you know, as awesome as it'll be. And it'll be awesome if the Leafs are, are you know, not just still in the playoffs as they will be because the series can't be over by then, yeah. but that they're hopefully not down three nothing in games. And there's there there is a game on the Saturday night of the expo in Toronto. Yeah. I believe that'll probably be what game four of the series will be the Saturday night. I, I, I'm thinking because somewhere around there. today. Yeah, right. There's a game we got. We got today is Saturday. There's probably one on Monday. Then there'll be one on maybe Wednesday. And then again on the Saturday, likely so, something like that. So that'll be game four. Mikey, I see you. Are you uh, are you with us? Can you see and hear me? Yeah. You stable. Good. Good. Ready to come on. You ready, Mikey? He's ready. OK, two thumbs up. There he is from the hotel. Where? Let me guess. Are you are you at the Strongsville show right now? Uh, I am currently in in Strongsville at the the Strongsville Sports Collector Convention. Uh, we have just finished day two, and uh, it's been another great show. I did some buying and and just getting more and more hyped, talking to some of the vendors that are coming with us to Toronto, and uh, and just getting more excited by the day. Right, and are you are you familiar with 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 our friend right here, the cartel? Of course I am, who happens to have a show with another one of uh, the Sport Card Expo's friends. Yes, Mr. indeed. Josh Thorne, Mr. Mr. Hit him High. Yes, everybody. If you're not yet aware, Le Cartel, this guy right here, and Josh Thorne, who goes by Hit him High Sports Cards, 
he hits he hits dingers and he collects bangers. I think it is. Is that there it? it is? You're better than there I am is. with the intro. Yeah, you, you can't even get it right on your own show. He I hits dingers up regularly. And he bangers. These guys have a they have the hockey card hangover podcast. Check it out on YouTube. Check it out on podcasts. I am happy to plug that for you, Le Cartel. And uh, it's all you know. Hey, the more hockey content, uh, the the better, right? I mean, and uh, you guys are both. I mean, I've known Josh through from the expo going back fifteen years anyway, and uh, Mister Cartel mostly meeting kind of through Instagram, but then in person, and of course this guy right here, Mister Mikey Singer, is uh, Mikey. Let everybody know because uh, I never know how to describe you. But the Sport Card Expo is owned by Steve Menzi, who may be joining us tonight. Okay, Steve hires Mikey's company called MCAM. It's an event management company to come in and really run the logistics. But Mikey, this guy right here, has taken an in, an intense interest in the in in the <laughs> hobby and collecting, and has become not only the guy who kind of is running a lot of the logistics during the expo and the event itself. He's also buying while he's doing it because he loves he loves the cards and he's gotten himself right involved. Mikey, is that does that accurately reflect kind of what your role is for expo and in the hobby right now? It does. Um both in terms of my buying habits within the hobby and also what we do within the expo. So uh, Steve has brought me in and uh, just actually right after I founded my company, Steve brought our, brought us in to help uh, take the expo to the next level. That was um, the the spring show of 2018. So we've been working together ever since then. Uh, I've watched the show grow and blossom each and every year we've worked together. Um, one thing that's amazing about Steve and, and, and many of our attendees and exhibitors will note is that he's always invested in the show. Um, creating more interactive experience. We spend more on the stage and put more effort into the stage than I think any other show out there. Um, you can see it by what we put in on the, like in terms of the, the makeup of the stage, how we capture the content and now using it uh, afterwards and streaming it directly to our, to our native app. And then who's on the stage? Uh, such, such esteemed guests as Jeremy Lee, uh, Card Collector 2, uh, we've got great um, Q and A's with guests like um, Timu Solani, with such esteemed moderators as Jeremy Lee, and uh, and and other great great Q and A's that we've got lined up for this year. Um, we have a lot of fun stuff happening, and uh, that's due in part to to Steve investing in it. You know, when we first came in, the autograph area was a small part of the show. That has grown into probably the best autograph market uh, anywhere in Canada. And we have an, a crazy lineup. And, and last November was also crazy. So very excited to be part of that. Um, and that's not mentioning any of the growth within the show with exhibitors, endemic sponsors, um, who then again add value to the show by creating amazing interactive booths. Uh, eBay has its own stage, which is running great content with uh, another show friend, Coach Co, uh, who will be hosting Q and A's on there with players and different dealers and tons of really fun breaks. So lots of really cool stuff going on. And and a, and a really long way to say that's what I do with the show. Yeah, well, so I wanted to ask, uh, I want to get Le Cartel. First of all, I do want to say hi. Greggy Boy is, on, is watching on Instagram right now. Josh, hit him high, is also. And... One of the things that I, I want to first get you to talk a bit more, because I was listening to the Hockey Cards Hangover earlier today, Mikey, and uh, Josh, who is Cartel's partner on the podcast, he mentioned, he said, you know, you have to get on the, you have to download the app. It'll help you out a lot when you're at the show. So, Mikey, just take a sec and, like, because it's not, maybe for me, an app isn't my natural, like, go-to to yeah. navigate a show i'm not saying it shouldn't be but i think so i think a lot of people might might think like what how is an how is the app going to enhance my overall expo experience and i want to credit the hockey cards hangover for shouting that out on their show earlier today or whenever they, it released today or yesterday but take take a sec mikey and and let us know and then i want to bring uh cartel yeah, back and the discussion. i have a question for him and, and thanks, uh, Le Cartel. That that's an awesome shout out because we've worked really hard to to build the app out and, and make it a 
uh, an enhancement to the show. So there, there's three layers to that. The first is finding your way around. If we printed out a floor plan of the show the way it is now and handed it out to people, it would be basically a fold out map uh, that everyone would be having to look around. If you want to find someone at the show, the best and most efficient ways to do that is through the app. Um, we're just updating the floor plan to the, the most, uh, the most up to date now where you'll be able to find any dealer exhibitor that you're looking for. The second is connecting with people, whether you're selling or buying, there's a, there's an actual, mar um, messaging area where I see a lot of activity and that has grown from the, the very first days of launching the app in 2019 to where it is today, a ton of activity happening, a lot of vendors talking about what they're looking to buy and what they're selling. And a lot of attendees talking about what they're looking to purchase and who's selling it. So, uh, for both attendees and vendors, always worth it to check it out there. And then finally, uh, there's ways to, to actually engage in the content. So watching, if you can't, you know, you're in hall five, you're doing shopping. There's a really cool Q and a that you want to see. You're able to watch that from your phone in the show, um, while doing some shopping, or maybe you can't make it to the show that day and you still want to capture some of that content. All of that is available native on the app or, or live on YouTube. So. Um, and then, and then I should probably mention the fourth layer, which is contesting. So always great to find some contesting and, and relevant show information, but yeah, it's, it's become a real, uh, a real great way for people to get around. I saw more people than ever using it. And, and I appreciate shows, uh, like, uh, like cartel and, and, and creators like, like cartel pointing that out for our fans. Let me ask this, and we're I'm seeing a uh, Greggy boy on Instagram is asking, you know, will the, will the internet connection in the expo be able to support all this use of say the app and of course other other apps that people are using how, how is the internet at the uh at the international center where the expo the, is held? the internet sadly it's it's a, a part we can't control so it's owned by the international center and the internet you're you're using will be likely from your cell phone provider there there is no free wi-fi um Maybe one day our endemic sponsors will come in and, and buy out the internet for everyone to use. But at this point, uh, that that's not going to happen. But if you are utilizing uh, your phone, you are able to, to use the app. It's a, a very low uh, bandwidth solution. So you won't awesome. have to worry about your data, obviously, unless you're streaming the content. And then I hope you have a It'll big data. Proper. Yeah. So I want to, I want to, so we mentioned, you mentioned how, you know, Steve Menzi, owner of the show really invests everything into, into the expo to improve it. I want to, you know, because I've been at every expo. I think, I, I think I missed one due to illness in the, you know, going back to the early two thousands. And when you, it's, it's like watching your kid grow or yourself grow. You don't notice the changes day to day, or maybe even show to show because you're living, you know, now, now five years can go by like, wow, that's so much different, but I didn't really notice it as it was happening. So I want to get Le Cartel to give us his perspective, perspective, his, his perception, if you will, like, how have you seen, Aton? how have you seen the expo evolve since Steve Menzi took it over in about 2015 or 16 back then? And, you know, bringing Mikey Singer and his team into you know, even even running the showcase rental, I've noticed is 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 a lot more streamlined than it used to be and organized. So, what has your experience been, Aton, in uh, your your perception again of the way the show has evolved over the past, say, five years? An excellent question, Jeremy. And I've been attending uh, probably just as long as you have. Uh, I actually, it's funny you pointed out a couple of years that I have vivid memories of. I think it was o two o three. I just have memories of the the young gun uh, craziness that was going on at the time with the short prints and whatnot. Um, yeah. And then and then you mentioned 2015, uh, roughly when uh, when Steve took over. Um, but but it, you put it so eloquently. We're watching this this child grow into something, and it is sometimes subtle. But I will tell you, I have honestly seen a bit of a uh, I don't want to use the term again, but I'm not above repeating my jokes. But a seismic gold shift in in the way that the show is presented uh right around that time i remember being in line uh at the upper deck pavilion in 2015 with with my sweaty hands on a box of series one looking for uh the connor mcdavid and you the upper deck had a, a photo shoot set up uh that i that i had fun with with my friends and just the overall feel 
it felt like it was becoming um, a bit more uh, a bit more glossy, uh, a bit more um, professional. And uh, we've seen the little jumps every year since then. Like you said, uh, things are very uh, streamlined with the uh, additions to booths and whatnot. Um, even like attention to details. The, the last show, we had a little bit of an incident with the space on the floor and Steve took care of that lickety split. Um, so yeah, I've, I've seen it. I've, I've, I've felt it. I've perceived it, Jeremy. Uh, and I think, I think others have as well. So, and, 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 yeah. and, 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 and very deserved, deservedly. So it, it, it's our show. We're also excited about it. Um, yeah, I hope every single time guys that uh, just gets glossier and glossier, shinier and shinier and represents Canada so well, which it has been doing. Yeah. You know, the show, it has come a long way. And as I'm, I'm listening to you talk, uh, and I'm going to interchangeably call you Le Cartel and by your actual given first name, which is Aton. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to just kind of slip in it, whatever I'm feeling. Uh, but uh, Le Cartel, as you were speaking, you know, I was thinking to myself that the hobby has gone pretty crazy in the past five years, as we know. And the hockey segment really, it had a almost like a, a head start with Connor McDavid coming into the league in 2015, 16 season. And then the cards, you know, starting to come out more and more into 16. So I'm, I'm thinking to myself, like, did, did Steve Menzi and Mikey have a lot to do with making the, sh making the show so much better or was the show going to get better because of the, of Connor McDavid, you know, really driving more hockey. And of course, Raptors success several, a few years back there and the Blue Jays success, you know, every time it comes. And of course the, and then, and then the pandemic, which did shut things down for a while, but then, you know, brought it back. And I think to myself, it's probably a bit of both. But the most important thing is that the way the hobby has gone, the expo needed the right people, person, people at the helm in the cockpit, kind of driving this thing and navigating it through where the hobby was going with or without them. And I think, I think being, again, being at this show every time and having a, a you know, a good relationship with these guys now that I'm so glad that the expo changed hands and became, you know, and that it was sold from, I think it was Al Sinclair back before to Steve Menzi, who brings on Mikey, because these guys were equipped to steer the ship in these new waves within these new waves of McDavid and, and pandemic and all that. So while the, while the show has definitely evolved over time and while I do I, I, I'm not taking anything away from Steve and, and Mikey and the teams there. Uh, but I must say, I'm just glad that it's them at the helm to make sure that the show is going to be able to accommodate the growth that would have otherwise happened. And the, the past ownership and management might not have really just been the right people to steer it as they were, you know, getting on in time and that sort of thing. Uh, th thoughts on that, Mikey? I mean, considering you're part of that new team. Yeah, um, it, it really took... Look, not every show grew exponentially during the same amount of time, right? So there, there's tons of sport card shows. I credit that to Steve's vision. Um, he took over a show uh, that had been stagnant for 15 years. Still a great show, but it, it really hadn't changed and it, it hadn't had a lot of investment. And it took someone who cared about both the attendees and the exhibitors to make it grow. Right to take the first steps to invest before you were making money on certain things, whether it was creating interactive uh, exhibits, putting money into the stage, all of that helped the show grow. Um, he was always willing to go out to other shows, connect with different sponsors. He really got out there. He made it a professional professional event um, and connected with everyone in the industry to make sure that we were seen as a place to be. Uh, and now we find ourselves here where we're the second largest show in the world um, with incredible attendee support and incredible exhibitor support um, and some of the best collections of sports cards anywhere in the world. Like I cannot, I, you know, I was joking about it. We were calling ourselves card fondlers today uh, as we were going around and looking at cards and buying different uh, things and and looking for soft corners and making sure exactly that as you grab some uh, and, and really inspecting and having a great time with the hobby. So uh, really, really excited for it all to come together and to see the amazing pieces of history that show up at the show. 
And it's not just, I mean, we say this every time, you know, and, and customarily, like I've been doing pre-expo shows on Sports Cards Live for four years now. And that's, you know, so I feel sometimes like we repeat the same thing, but hey, we do get new viewers and the old viewers who've been here along the way, you know, please be patient. Uh, but it's important to note that, especially for people coming from the US or other international uh, locations, that it's not just a hockey show, far Far from it. You know, you go to the national and people always ask me, how much hockey will I find at the national? I'm like, listen, you're going to find more than you expect, but it's still probably 1% of the whole show. You're right. But in Toronto at the expo in Toronto, you're getting probably like, it's not like it's 99. It's it's not, it's not the complete inverse. It's not 99% hockey, 1% everything else. It's probably like 50, 60% hockey, you know, 40 or so percent everything else being basketball football baseball soccer uh pokemon and you know everything else that, that gets in there so it's it's a great show for everybody i think that i think i think that i think more and more people are realizing it so keep that in mind anything either of you'd like to add on before i go to some comments which there are some questions i want to get to so one Mike, quick you note you made mention of how the efficiency of the uh the showcase rentals are I just got word from my team that someone named Jeremy Lee was very late handing their their showcase rental <laughs> order in. Uh, so I just like to point that out. If you're an exhibitor, get your orders in. Don't be like Jeremy Lee. Uh, don't wait until we reach out to you. <laughs> okay, <laughs> my my sincerest of sincere apology. Uh, okay, let's see here. I'm just looking at Instagram right now. Greggy Boy is saying you guys got me hyped, and he also says that Doctor Collectible told me. He has never been anywhere outside the United States, which is crazy. And he is coming to the expo. So Dr. Collectible, whose name is Daryl Garner, will be mm -hmm. at the expo as well. And I've seen uh, he'll be at one of the he'll be at, I believe, the Friday night trade night as well. Um, so for anyone who wants to meet Mr. Doctor, Mr. Dr. Collectible, you can do that at the at the expo. All right. Let's do a couple of comments here. Uh, Phil, the loud collector, says. Typical Leafs fan, completely de delusional, but love you, cartel. Uh, the professor has joined us and says, what percentage of attendees are from U.S. and what percentage international? Now, Mikey, you may you may or may not have a, a better grasp on that on that question, but I'll, if I may, I'm gonna I'm gonna take a guess, Mikey, and you tell me what you think. I think we're looking at like you know, at least ninety percent are. Are Canadian that are coming, and then ten percent probably of the of the other ten percent. It's like most are from the U.S., and there are going to be probably. I mean, you see them every time. 40, 50 people coming from Europe and and elsewhere around, which is still it's a nice healthy number. Uh, and I see them because I, I I see them every show. These guys, the, mm -hmm. the Finns and the Swedes, come in all the time. They yep. they love they love the expo. So. <laughs> Uh, but but more and more Americans coming up every expo now. I'm finding uh, cartel. What's your you know as somebody who is uh, you know dealing with these people? What's your perspective on that? I love making deals with the Scandinavians. I love them and I love their uh, their accents and I love their attitude. Um, I, I feel like this particular show is going to see more Americans coming in than ever, based on keeping my ear to the ground and. People popping up in my DMs, letting me know that they're 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 on their way. Um, that definitely seems to be growing. I, th I think you've got the numbers right because it will overwhelmingly be uh, locals, but also all over Canada. I mean, obviously that goes without saying. Literally all over Canada, but I think that that number is growing with the awareness, the fact that some of these popular influencers like Doctor Collectible, even that the fact that we're even on their radar. I mean, like, look, 10 years ago, that that wouldn't have been a thing in the same circumstances. But um, there's there's more chatter about it there. I, I mean, I'm sure Mikey loves how engaged people get and the stuff that they're sharing on social media, putting it all out there. Um, there's even, uh, you know, I, I know, Jeremy, you don't want me to get into some of this stuff, but there was there was a, a lot of um, amazing support for the expo in Canada when another certain influencer had some choice words about the expo as an American visitor. And we were just like, that is, that's not the case. Uh, we clarified and, you know, the next show Americans had a wonderful time and had nothing but great feedback. Um, but it, it, it's awesome. We're, we're, it's, it's getting out there. 
and it's being received in the United States of America. And uh, I almost guarantee we're going to see more more Americans than ever before at this particular. Yeah, I, I, I'm getting a chuckle. We, we we have a troll in the chat right now, and uh, he's actually making me laugh with his comments. Uh, pretty pretty funny. Pretty good. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm, I'm not going to ban him yet. I'm going to see if, we, if he gives me. Nah, else. I think he's been pretty harmless. And look, I, I think Aton's right. We, you know, and, and I can credit some of that to Jeremy. I, I sat down with him two years ago and asked him to create a, um, a list of, of creators that we wanted to bring in and, and target to bring into the show. Uh, and here we are two years later and we've got Chris Sewell, uh, Troy Reich, um, Jay, Jay's coming in from Mojo Sports. I feel like this is Jay's second favorite or first favorite show. He taught, he gives us the biggest hype. He's, he's been awesome. Um, he loves the, you know, he loves he, the exchange rate. Yeah, he does. And, and I think that's what he's, he's really pushing on the American. You gotta come over when you get that dollar exchange. It's, uh, it's definitely been, been helpful. And, and we have some great U S exhibitors. Um, you know, we, we've had Dave and Adams come up uh, for years and now uh, with the hits uh, and with Hit Parade and, and obviously um, the, pot, the Chase podcast has been on our stage uh, more than a few times. So it's really exciting to see that grow. Right on. Good, good stuff. Good stuff. All right. Go to another. Uh, we, we got lots of comments here. Uh, Phil says, just to clarify, Jeremy is rooting for the blue team out of sympathy and better expo experience. I am. I'm certainly rooting for the Toronto Maple Leafs. Nothing against my my Bruin fan friends, but I want uh, I want what's best for the Expo. Colin Murray, what's going on, buddy? Good to see you, '90s hockey collector. Welcome to the show. LGC wants to know, Mikey. Maybe you can answer this. Is anybody going to be interviewing George St. Pierre uh, on the stage next weekend? No, sadly, unlikely not. Um, with, with someone like George, he's going to have a, a really tight schedule. So. Um, we do have some great uh, Q and A's that are going on. We're going to be posting the schedule very shortly. Actually, probably you'll see it posted up tomorrow. Uh, but GSP sadly is not on that uh, Q and A list. All right. Well, thank you for addressing that, Steve Menzi, who you know is the uh, the man who <laughs> owns Expo. Can't wait to see everyone out there at the show, Steve. Looking forward to seeing you as well. Irish Flyers. That's Neil. He's uh, got his funny money. He'll be come crossing the border, coming to Canada <laughs> for the show. YK says the app is great. Helped me out a lot last expo. So that's great. You know, I think it'll probably be especially helpful for the, the first timers or the second timers. Mm -hmm. If you know the floor plan, like, like, like I would, you probably, you know, and you know where people are generally, you may not need it as much, but like Mikey said earlier, there will still be uses for it. Uh, professor, good evening again. Bobby Burrell, I'll be, he'll be making the long half hour drive. Stop bragging about your proximity to the expo, Bobby. You know, you know that uh, guys like me are quite envious of, of that for sure. Brett S is, is an Australian collector with the intention to get to the expo one day soon. A credit to the show and the organizers. It has international reach. Brett, make sure you, when you do come, let us know. And uh, and then what we'll do is we'll do a po when we get Brett from Australia to the expo, guys, we'll do a post expo, you know, recap. We'll get Brett on the show with us here and he can tell us what that experience was like traveling across literally to the other side of the world to come join all of us at the Toronto Expo. That's our buddy Ralphie Stamatis. Can't wait for expo. The floor plan layout seems nicely done this time around. Very strategic. Mikey, anything? I, I feel like Steve handles the floor plan, but is there anything you can tell us? about it and because he because what what stamatis is saying here is that he's noticing some strategy can you just shed some light on to what he might mean by that there is um you know we 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 work and we evolve with the show so as as the audience grows and as we see pain points we try to make the show floor uh flow a little bit better uh we've changed up a couple things i you know what one of your comments is asking about tcg uh we have csc coming in in hall three uh, which is now going to have its own entrance and that hall will have they're going to have a huge section with esports tcg cosplaying uh really adding that other aspect of collecting that comes into the show uh, so there is sort of that that move to to have that separated and have that its own life inside there especially with pokemon larkana uh you know the you know metazoo there's so many great collectibles and obviously magic 
Uh, we even have uh, the guy who pulled the the one card, uh, the one magic card, and sold it to uh, and sold it to uh, what's his name for um, for Post Malone. I can't Post believe Post I Malone. I can remember the guy's name who sold the magic card, but not the artist he sold it to. That shows you where my head's at. But yeah. again, like just adding all aspects of the the hobby in and 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 really adding to the show. Uh, we've even changed where the the autograph area is, which is going to live in Hall Three next to the stage so everyone who's doing the q and a's if you're stuck in the in the lineup waiting for that guest to come on you don't have to miss it uh and just really making it a, a much more fun experience for the fans thank you for that. i just want to let everybody know Leighton sheldon will be joining us shortly he's not here yet he was going to be a little bit late tonight for what we call the vintage spotlight segment but uh Leighton is where you are right now mikey he's at the strongsville show uh this weekend and he's going to be who knows maybe he's in the hotel room next to you and he's going to be streaming in from <laughs> there who <laughs> I don't know for sure, but uh, well, I, I hope you know what. If he is in the hotel, I, I'm I'm tethering to my phone, so I hope Leighton knows how to tether. Uh, because the hotel Wi Fi was one of the reasons I was a little bit late coming in. We'll see, we'll see, we'll definitely see how it goes. Uh, here's a question for you, Mikey Do you ever see separating TCG from the sports cards by halls or sections in the future? And actually, before you answer that, I want to I want to go back to Le Cartel. And get Le Cartel's thoughts on this before you even answer it, Mikey. What what do you think, Aton, about card shows splitting the Pokemon and other TCGs into a different regional area within the show, away from the sports cards? What are your thoughts on that? It's a good question. I haven't I haven't given too much thought to that. We've seen you know the the slow creeping of the intermingling. Um, it it has meshed so well. Um, and so kind of under the radar at the previous shows that you don't even really notice that. And by the way, I, I know Americans that came in the last show just for Pokemon. Um, mm -hmm. They knew that there were some big Pokemon dealers there and that there would be a lot of Pokemon available. Um, and I think we've also seen that from some of the CSC shows as well, where there's a bit of a separation. There's like an area where there is the, the cosplay, the, the LARPing, whatever it is. And, um, and then the card area. Um, I, I, it's something that is interesting. It seems like it could work in theory. Uh, it's not, it, it's not kind of on the top of my mind as something that necessarily needs to be done. I think um, TCG guys know that it's going to be there. They're, they're heading to the expo knowing that and sports people know that it's going to be predominantly sports. I think, you know, TCG only shows are, are a thing and, and will continue to be a thing. So I don't necessarily know that separating is necessary, but um, you know, if, if that's, the way it goes, it would obviously obviously be interesting to see how that how that works out. Yeah, Might and be. I don't think it, I don't see it separating. I see features being built in, like like I said, and, and I addressed this just a, a little bit ago. Where CSC is there, they have um, a large activation within the area that will feature T, T, uh, TCG, and that'll be a feature, but not separated, right? At, at, there's so Dolly's is a great example of who sells tons tons of tcg but also tons of sports cards right so there wouldn't be a way for them to separate i think it all fits together but we can feature that part of the hobby in a separate area of the show as opposed to separating all aspects of it I'm having audio issues. I'll be right I know. Back. I was having oh, audio. My bad. Oh, Sorry. you made me panic because I've got the terrible internet. I'm like, this is it. This I, is where I my was... internet starts to go. <laughs> you guys are both one. Everyone was, was one. I, that was my bad. My bad. I was stoically panicking. Yeah, I well, am... you have shades on because I can't see your eyes, Aton. <laughs> so I don't know if you're panicking the way I was. <laughs> Fellas, I have like, as of a few hours ago today, I am like coming down with a bit of a cold. So I'm sitting there i'm you know doing that so i oh, just I, I in time myself. for the expo just in time for Here the expo go. jeremy stukes says it is tough to split some dealer when some dealers sell vintage modern and tcg all at their booth and that's a great point because if you mm -hmm. you could literally be the only person with tcg in the whole sports card area if that's your way in because you could say well listen i sell i sell it all so i want to go in the main hall now you're the only guy in there with tcg potentially so i at first, I thought that was a great idea, but I don't know that I'm crazy about it anymore. Both, either as an attendee or a fellow, uh, a fellow uh, 
uh, uh, vendor. Vendor. That's the word I'm looking for. Uh, okay. Thank you for the question, Sean Red and uh, Stukes for jumping in with it too. LGC says, put the sausage man beside the lemonade stand. Great combo. Uh, this next question, I'm just going to ask you, Mikey, but we don't, I don't want to get into this completely because it's, you know, I don't think it's an issue, but do I'll, I'm going to ask you the question like this. Does the expo have any policies against having any vendors at the show who offer card cleaning services? No, we do not. Mr. Minty will be there offering card cleaning services, and we love Mr. Minty. What do you mean? <laughs> We're okay. not at the police the police industry. Look, I, I know there's a lot of debate going on, but that's for the graders to decide, not for us. Right? That's 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 on a, another. We're here to make it fun for all aspects of the industry to be enjoyed. Got it. Except no, appreciate Parker, the answer. We're, we're, we will not allow that. Contender Sports Cards bought a McDavid Young Guns PSA 10 for $4,500 through Mint Inc. Mint Inc. is a, an LCS in Toronto that, that Le Cartel uh, works with right there. So thanks for the shout out there. Contender Colin Murray, longtime vendor at Expo, says he's been to many shows in the U.S. and the Expo is second to none all aspects. Move in. Emptying the garbage even. Having a crew to wipe down the glass of the rented display cases. That is, it's actually pretty crazy that he calls that out because I always so appreciate when they drop off my cases at my booth that they then Windex them and clean them up because that's the only shine up that those, that they're getting all weekend because I don't, I don't carry those supplies. So yeah, uh, good, good shout out there. Uh, and and from, just, just a quick shout out to, to Mark from the team who delivers almost 250 showcases to our vendors uh, and make sure everyone gets their keys and Everyone has them cleaned and ready to go. So just shout out to the hard work that, that he puts in. There you have it. There you have it. Now, uh, Jeff S. wants to know, Mikey, how can one reach your team? Receive not a made amount. So is there a way to reach you guys at, at MCAM? Yeah, yeah. And, and the reason, Jeff, you, you only received that automated response from Drew. He's still getting the messages. You got it because we're out in, in Strongsville right now. Uh, if he hasn't gotten back to you, he will in the next day or so. Uh, apologies for the delay. We're just bringing a little joy to, to sports collectors at, out in Strongsville, Ohio, before we come on back. Thank you. Louie. Louie will be at the show. I believe Louie is in Minnesota as well. Another American coming up. Steve Menzi said, this is already 10 minutes ago, that we're committed to trying to make the show better all the time for dealers and collectors. That's what we'd like to hear. Very good. Very good. Uh, the, the sports card professor uh, is what can be done to get... Uh, to get him to come and grow hockey LA. Uh, he's talking about Rob Varis. Uh, great question, uh, Professor, but not sure that we uh, are going to get into that one right now. Uh, 86 says, people don't know, but I actually love Canada and have no hate. It's just harmless. Hey, we know that, 86. You're, you're <laughs> as good as they come. Don't even worry about that. And Professor says, the U.S. vendor, oh, he's talking about Mr. Minty is going to be coming to the show. Yeah, we're well aware of that. Irish Flyers wants to know, will anyone be selling BCW supplies? They There will be, as we've heard. Mm -hmm. And East Coaster wants to know, Mikey, at what point are you going to be all grown up and become Mike? Is that what's <laughs> well, let's put it this way. At 45 years old and two kids in, I think I'll be buried with the name Mikey. It's Mikey. Dominic Plant <laughs> is going to be making the seven-hour drive from Cincinnati. That's pretty awesome, too. Dominic Plant, uh, looking forward to getting you up at the show you just yeah hop in the you. car with me on sunday night when we head back to toronto there you go uh east coaster says the bald guy that's me should be considering a hat they aren't really expensive <laughs> <laughs> okay good stuff good let's see what else we have vintage car collectors in a big show this weekend and would love to see pokemon separated vast majority of sports card collectors don't care about it right uh, yeah i hear you on that but what happens if then what happens if a, if a sports car collector has some at their booth? You have to tell them to put away. You can't really do that. Aton, what were you going to jump in with? I'm not going to argue that vast majority of sports collectors uh, don't care about it, but I'll just use myself as an example. Um, I, I got a little into a particular Pokemon set uh, to, to many people's disbelief. And I actually watched a lot of collectors uh, glom on to certain sets because they released them so rapid fire. But the 151 set got the cartel. 
I'm like five cards away from the master set. I like the fact that there will be some people who bring Pokemon by my table. I, I, I need I need a couple cards um, and I have a lot of extra cards. And I like the fact that, like I said, it's kind of been seamless the last few shows to me. I don't know why anyone would have an issue with it. And like I said, I don't think it would be necessary to separate it. But you are seeing more little Pokemon sections popping up at sports dealers tables you, you'll never see sports at a pokemon table that being said but you'll you you're you're gonna start seeing that that there's gonna be some pokemon it's already been happening but it pops up in some sports displays yeah for sure it does for sure it does all right let's keep on rolling here jc says maybe you should consider moving the expo to boston they know a little bit more about hockey there now that's <laughs> that's a chirp that's a chirp isn't it right there jc can't wait to see you at the show uh i gotta bring up east east coaster is one of the more pleasant trolls that i've ever seen he says is there even one hot chick at these shows and i wouldn't typically address this comment but fact of the matter is um there's no shortage of women at the show there just isn't mm -hmm. and uh it's it's awesome like there there are several female collectors they watch this show they watch other show they have instagram mm -hmm. accounts they collect more and more than ever I'm noticing that's one of these nice, pleasant changes we've noticed over the past, you know, five, six, seven years at card shows is we're seeing more and more female collectors. And that's really that that's awesome. Mikey, can you shed any light from your perspective on kind of the, the way we're seeing more women at shows? Yeah, uh, you're seeing more women. You're seeing more families at shows. Uh, you're seeing more kids come with with their parents to shows. The industry as a whole has grown immensely. Um, in terms of content creators, you're seeing Mama Breaks, uh, Don Diego have huge impacts on the industry, uh, have huge pull and, and, and large fan bases. Um, inside our show, you see a ton of vendors that are run by women uh, who are, are, are just as much into the industry as any guy. And on the show floor buying, you see a ton of a ton of female collectors. I mean, still the the audience is still male dominated, but that's changing and that's growing. Just like sports fandom, right? It, it's more indicative of an overall shift in society than just the hobby. But um, yeah, I, I think uh, it was it was a funny question that led into a serious answer that that is bodes well for the hobby overall. Right. A new generation and new collectors is always great for an industry and a hobby um, and one that I love to see happening. Yeah. I, I, same here. We got Amanda, the graded gamer in the chat. And I mean, I know Amanda personally. Great girl. And uh, and uh, like just she's she's like, I don't even want to say one of the guys because because that's that that makes you know that that in itself is not the greatest way to put it. But Amanda fits right in with all the other collectors that and the female collectors, too. And uh, like, it's, we're, we're so lucky to be in this community and make friends, whether they're men, women, children, uh, you know, older people, whatever. It's, uh, it's just, it's, it's awesome. It's awesome. Good to see you, Amanda. Thanks for, for joining the show tonight. And uh, I said, East Coaster, if you want to stick around, keep it clean. I won't ban you yet, but uh, please, please keep it clean. Guys, Rage is here. Rage is in the house. The six goat wants to know. How can someone new book a table? And I think we get this question a lot, Mikey. Uh, can you speak a little bit towards the demand for table space and booth space right now? And uh, is there a, a wait list? Is it is it is it a deep wait list? Can someone it, it, can someone it is a, can someone can yeah. someone give you guys their name right now and expect to get in in November a year from now? How is that looking? <laughs> so there is a wait list. Uh, we typically try to get it. We we typically get about 80% return rate on, on our exhibitor. So uh, that's one of the reasons Steve has been rapidly expanding the show is to make room for a lot of new new exhibitors who wanted to, to come into the show. Uh, we're always adding new exhibitors for this year. Uh, we pretty much peaked out and, and did get a lot of our waiting list guests. And it does take a, a little bit longer to get in as a guest. So you do have to be patient. Um, and, and the way that you would sign up is very soon after this show, we'll put out a, a, a portal for all new new vendors to have the ability to get on that wait list. And again, once we get through our, our rebookings, uh, which we have automated and, and we'll be moving to a, a much more uh, efficient system, again, 
one of those efficiencies and, and, and investments that Steve's doing to make the experience better for our exhibitors. Uh, we'll be making that, that experience a lot uh, easier and hopefully getting to those waitlist guests uh, a lot quicker and bringing you into the show. So don't get discouraged if you don't hear back from us right away. Uh, it does take some time for us to get to, but we are accepting new exhibitors. Eitan, question for you, because I, I'm just wondering if you hear it too, but I get people, I get messages about this saying, how do I, you know, how do I get in? How do I get in? Do you get, you know, you're at Mint Inc., one of the bigger LCSs in the, the greater Toronto area. Do you ever get, have customers or people asking you the same sort of question? Yeah, no, for sure. There's uh, there's questions surrounding uh, what people perceive as the mysteries of being able to be a, a show vendor. Um, but I, I mean, I know a lot of people who have now, you know, become vendors. They seem to have had a, a, a smooth experience. I think some were on waiting lists. Um, but yeah, people people do often ask about that. They they wonder, uh, for example, um, you know, I and it's an assumption I have. I actually might as well ask Mikey this while we're here. Um, Mikey, who, by the way, I call everyone who's Michael in my life Mikey anyway, so you don't have a choice. <laughs> uh, he just he knows he goes with it. Um, the question being, you know, there's a main area as usual. And then, you know, uh, so I, I wonder if someone knew they, there's an there's sometimes a concern expressed about what their situation will be as a new mm -hmm. vendor, you know, as opposed to the, you know, seasoned vet vendors who have, you know, placement in the middle of the show, so to speak. Yeah. And, and I think, look, it's funny. There is no bad areas of the show. Uh, when we started putting boost in the connector. I think a lot of people were nervous about that being outside of hall five. Uh, and again, it's just the, the growth and, and the, the fear of change, but now those vendors will hold on to that, those booths for dear life. Um, same with our vendors in hall four and same with our vendors in hall three with our, our revamped area. So uh, it's important for us for all areas of the show to be as good as any other, uh, to make sure it's not a main hall. And, uh, and for all experiences to be the same. And obviously, look, some, someone who's been with the show for, for 25 years, like Carlos from Sluggers, uh, is looking to be in the same spot that he's always been in. And, uh, and, and the show just grows and changes, but uh, there is no bad area to be in. Uh, and and we, we invest a lot into the show to make that the case. And it's come a long way from that perspective, even in the last four shows, you know, where the, that, that, that connector to hall four and hall three is becoming much more of a known entity that, you know, there, mm -hmm. there are, there's a whole other section of the show. So make sure you're getting there and not spending all your time in hall five. Uh, let's say good evening to cards. A H Mark Santucci wants to know if I will wear my flames hat. I don't even own a flames hat Mark. <laughs> so no, I will not be wearing my flames hat at the show, Mark, but we got to see you up there, Mark. One of these days, Joe Perot is here. My good buddy, cool crew. Cheers and have fun up there, Joe. Sure wish you could make it to the Expo. 86 is happy with the Bruins win over the Toronto Maple Leafs. Tonight, mm -hmm. as he should be, that is his team. Here's a great comment from Chinner. It says, went to the Fall Expo for the first time last year. I'm hooked and cannot make it out to next week's Spring Expo. I might be in the minority, but I will be hitting up the Beckett booth. I cannot wait. Oh, I you will make it. I cannot wait to make it. Sorry, I read it like you won't be. You will be there and you will be hitting up the Beckett booth. Very cool, Chinner. Look forward to seeing you as always. Hitman's kid says the industry is alive. Let's go, Mr. Minty. Colin Murray, <laughs> speaking about women in the hobby, I have three female customers that are huge vintage collectors from the 50s and the 60s. Very cool. LGC says uh, the, the ladies will be lining up for William Shatner, who will be in the at the show making an appearance. And Adam Holgate, can't wait for the expo. Adam, looking forward to seeing you there. As well, Mr. Birdie Steen, hoping to see Rob Beatles cards at the expo. Then, yeah, and where do you put the Beatles cards if they're not with the sports cards and they're not with the TCG? So, good one, good one. Professor, will Mikey be at the national and have a booth? Mikey, what are your national plans? I was actually going to see if you wanted to fly in Toronto and drive to Cleveland with me. Yeah, I'm actually, you know what? I, I was talking to Steve the other day. He mentioned that as maybe I should do that. And I, I was yeah. going to mention the same thing too. So we will chat more. I might, I might do that with you. That might, yeah, maybe I'll do that to get to, to the national this year. I, I won't have a booth, but I, I will be at the national, whether Jeremy drives with me or not, I might fly, I might drive, uh, but I'll definitely be at the national. I won't be at a booth, but I will be shopping. That's 
you know, and luckily my wife is not watching this show, but yes, I, I will be shopping at the national. As will I, as will I, uh, Dominic, will the people selling the different meats be at the show? Will they be there? Yes. A hundred percent. They yes. are a staple in the show. Like they are as important as maybe an upper deck, right? They need to be there. Leighton, I see you. Uh, give this two more minutes and we'll bring you up. Okay. Uh, Mikey Chinner is asking about the corridor, which is the, the hallway between halls mm -hmm. five and four was very backed up with traffic, especially when Mike Tyson was there back in November. Uh, any, have you guys addressed that issue at all? Twofold. So the area for the autographs now is in hall three, uh, which does have its own entrance. So that alleviates it. We have a workaround where people will be able to go outside, obviously with it being much nicer. Uh, people will be able to to just jump right past the hall if it does get too clogged. Uh, so we've gotten those two two solutions, and we're gonna widen it the, a little bit more to to add for for that extra ease of use. So again, minor changes that hopefully will will provide great results for us. Okay, thank you for that. I'm gonna read about three more comments, and we're gonna bring Leighton on, and uh, and then we're gonna bring Sam on after. So Sam, I see you there, but. <laughs> We're going to do the vintage spotlight. So I'm just speaking to Sam, who's in the green room. Um, we're, you're going to be about 20 minutes or so, okay? If that's all right. So if you want to come back, that's fine too, or hang out right there. Irish Flyer says, make sure everybody stops by Marcel Dion's booth and say hi and have a mm -hmm. chance to talk with NHL sixth highest scoring player ever. He's great to talk with, and he's very discreet there. You wouldn't even know you're at Marcel Dion's booth if you weren't, uh, if you didn't know that that's who he was. So Check out that booth. Sean Red says to all dealers watching, bring your vintage hockey. There seems to be a lot less at the last show compared to past expo. So there's a good request right there. East Coaster, take care. We'll see you later. We'll see you later for sure. All right. We're gonna bring up, we're gonna bring up Mr. Leighton Sheldon from Just Collect and Vintage Breaks. He is currently, I believe, at the Strongsville show. And Leighton, so is Mikey. Mikey's at the Strongsville show too, right with you. So welcome to the show. How are you doing? What? How? Tell us how. How did you do at the show today? Uh, the show was great. I actually got home uh, late this afternoon, so I'm actually doing this from my apartment. Uh, so I'm not still in Strongsville. So if you're looking for me, Mikey, you're not gonna find me. Uh, okay. But uh, the show, Mikey, if you were there, I mean, it's great. It's a total throwback, Jeremy. It really feels like it's 1983, and it's unbelievable, though. It really is. Yeah, I've never been to Strongsville. I've seen a lot of content uh, to date. Well, I sh I've seen like the thumbnails today. I didn't get a, didn't get time to watch, but I've seen several content creators put out some reviews or some recaps of their day at the show. I'm going to check them out later. Uh, and it's interesting to note, Mikey, uh, that the Expo team runs the Strongsville show too. Isn't that right? Yeah, we're, we're out here. We, we work for the... Uh... So it's a Leland's owned event that uh, that contracts us out to to help uh, organize and run it for them uh, and with them. And uh, the show is is amazing. Uh, it's I, I really I had never been out to, to Strongsville. I'd never been out to the show before we worked it three years ago. Uh, I fell in love with it there shopping. Uh, there's some really, really cool stuff. It punches well above its weight in what you're going to see. Uh, in terms of vintage, especially in a non-shiny, like there's obviously a little bit of modern, but it really is one of the best places, especially to to, co to complete sets. Um, and and as Leighton Leighton just said, like it is a throwback. You have rows of binders and rows of people crossing off lists as they complete sets. Uh, very old school in that respect, um, and a ton of a ton of raw vintage which I find harder to find every single day. And I like yeah. to gamble a little, right? Like I want to pay, I want to play the game where I get to inspect. Is this a six? Is this a seven? How are we going to negotiate this? So I find there's a lot more fun in play in a raw card uh, than there is necessarily in, in a graded card. Yeah. Yeah. I, I can certainly see that Leighton. Give us your your sort of uh, perspective of the show. I mean, th when Leighton comes on the show, guys, on Saturday nights, we call it the Vintage Spotlight because he is the vintage savant, if you will. He's a professional mm -hmm. baseball card treasure hunter, again, from Just Collect and Vintage Breaks. Let me get that on the ticker right now so you guys can make sure you're following Leighton uh, on Instagram, Leighton underscore Sheldon, just underscore collect, and his podcast, 
trading card therapy. But Leighton, give us give us a rundown. How was the what was the vintage scene like at at the Strongsville show? So I'm going to start here, Jeremy. That I don't know if everyone who's watching knows that before I started just collect, I had two jobs in the industry after I graduated Rutgers College in 2000. So I first worked for Mark Murphy, the baseball card kid. And the reason why I'm bringing this up, Mikey, because it's relevant to the show, you'll see why now. My second job, I worked for four years for Leland's. So my direct bosses were Josh Evans, may rest in peace, and Mike Hefner. And so Hef and I had a chance at the show, Jeremy, to spend some quality time together. And in fact, if you're not following me on my YouTube channel, you should subscribe to my Just Collect YouTube channel because Hef gave me what was started off as a five minute interview. He's now joked it became a 20 minute interview. We're gonna upload it to YouTube this week and he's expecting royalties from this interview. So I'm really hoping it performs well uh, because I think my bill's gonna be quite large if it doesn't. But the joking aside, the way it kind of played out for me is I got in Thursday. Thursday is set up and I was fortunate to have some connections there, uh, fellow dealers that were able to get me into the convention. And so if you've gone to any show the first day for a setup, you kind of know it's a little bit challenging because not everyone's setting up at the same time. So you really have to be disciplined and you kind of have to wait until the room starts to fill up. So that was kind of like the four to seven on Thursday. Keep in mind, I've already spent thousands of dollars by the time Friday's rolling around. Thursday night, we're going out to a steak dinner with a couple of the guys. And Friday, you could feel, I don't know if you could, um, if you concur with this, Mikey, there was a stark difference, Jeremy, between Thursday and Friday. Because when I arrived there Friday morning, let's say like 8.45 a.m., there was electricity in the air because you could now feel the room at 60, 80, 90% capacity. And at that point, Jeremy, like your head's on a swivel because you're seeing, as Mikey said, you're like, oh my God, I think that's fresh 50s, ungraded stuff. Like, I haven't checked it out. <laughs> but then you know, like Ashish is there with this incredible graded inventory. So I'm running around like a chicken without a head, but having the best time doing it. And one of the other things that's great about Leland's running the show is you truly have one of the oldest, most respected auction houses that are really, they're like, they're laying the, the groundwork, not just for the show that happened like this year, but you can tell how important it is that next year's show is going to be good. And that the year after that's going to be good. And I give them a lot of credit. Because I joke with Hef, I don't know that they're making a ton of money on this convention. Um, exactly. I'm like, I see you shaking your head. But that doesn't stop them from trying to be as hospital as they can. Uh, the energy, like I said, in the room, I thought was tremendous. And really, whether it be with Hef or Gary, uh, who I interviewed, who's, you know, you're going to check that out on YouTube as well. Um, there was just a lot of, as Mikey said, fun to be had if you were into buying raw, ungraded vintage. There was ungodly amounts of great advantage. And I give the dealers a lot of credit for me to go on the floor. Keep in mind, I had no booth. And to be able to spend well over five figures on graded cards and ungraded cards at a fair enough margin where I think I could resell them because it's not all for my PC. Um, it was fantastic. But I want to say, and I want to close with this because you know I could talk forever, Jeremy. One of the coolest things I saw at the show wasn't cards. I was able to buy and see some periodicals from the 60s and 70s. So like this, for example, is a sport hobbyist. So check this out. If you haven't heard of Frank Nagy, he's one of the most well-respected pioneers in the hobby. The guy was having a $1 sale on the back of a 1963 issue of a sports hobbyist. And the 1971 issue shows Honus Swagger on front. I mean, like I was reading these earlier and I'm getting goosebumps now because these are obviously only important to a baseball card nerd. Yeah. But yet, that's exactly what I am. And that's exactly what everyone else at the show is. So it was it was tremendous. It really was. Well, that, that, that's great to hear. Uh, that, that's great. And now you are coming up to the Expo next weekend as well. I am. I'm expecting you to roll out the red carpet for the Thursday night dinner, Jeremy. You are on the VIP guest list, Mr. Great. Lady I Shelvin. The, list, the VIP. I've been elevated. Excellent. Yeah, you're the only VIP, actually. So uh, in, in, enjoy. You're Even the better. only person I've, I've given that status to. So, um, yeah, no, I, I'm I'm looking forward to seeing you there, man. It's gonna be fun. Uh, 
you must be long to see. I'm, I'm guessing you were at the show today. You had a day of travel. You're back home. Um, so I want to just say thank you for joining us and giving us your perspective. Uh, and I want to introduce you to Le Cartel, who's right over there. I don't know if you've met uh, Aton. Please meet Leighton Sheldon. And uh, he'll Aton will have a, a booth at the show next weekend. So make sure you stop by and say hello to him, Leighton. And um, anything else uh, that you'd like to either mention or, or Aton, Mikey, any questions for Leighton before we, we let him roll? And Leighton, anything you want to say to these guys at all is fine. So uh, I'll start with you. Aton, any any comments, questions uh, for, for Leighton? Well, I have met Leighton on a previous episode of Sports Cards Live. Okay. Um, I don't want to tread the same territory that we did as it relates to the current state of vintage grading. I, I think we kind of agreed on some of the points that we talked about at that point. Uh, not much to ask Leighton. I love seeing his uh, excitement and his passion for, for vintage stuff. I love when uh, people walk into the shop with uh, the vintage binders from like the, the 70s. Someone also brought in the, uh, the baseball card collectors club. Um, they had that signed certificate. I think it was signed by, uh, by like Whitey Ford and a couple other guys. Um, I love seeing that that hobby history stuff. Victory Investments recently posted an old um, kind of like collector's kit from the 60s where you'd like you'd glue the cards on. Uh, I love seeing all that stuff. So uh, that's why people should follow Layton's content because it's interesting and relevant to the vintage stuff and relevant to the hobby. And and uh, I love that stuff. So thanks for that. Now, before uh, Mikey, I want to let you go. But before you do, Layton, I just a couple of comments have come in. First of all, East Coaster says, Leighton is wearing a shirt from 1974, to which Mark Santucci <laughs> says 1974 is classic, to yeah. which uh, East Coast, and by the way, Leighton, East Coaster has been kind of trolling tonight, but we're letting him, <laughs> we're letting him stick around. He, and then he says, Leighton, you might want to iron that shirt next time. So just give me a little bit of, a little bit of good advice there, East Coaster. <laughs> All right, um, Leighton, or sorry, Mikey, anything else uh, for Leighton before he jumps off? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, did you get a chance? So another thing that's that, um, you know, uh, Leland has done here is, is brought in some great guests. Uh, I don't know. Did you get a chance to, to go to any of the, the autograph signings? No, it was really tight for me on time. I left today like late morning and uh, I did not have a chance uh, to spend, you know, any time with the athletes. But really, like I said, the, the show itself was tremendous. And I'm hoping that for the next year, I'll actually have a booth and exhibit, so I'll be able to spit, you know, stay longer and see the autograph guests and, and so forth. So, well, it sounds like you've got you know the right people to get yourself a booth. So, so I'd say the the odds are pretty good. And well, uh, yeah, it was has the tough nut to crack. So we'll see we'll see what we can <laughs> yeah. do. Um, but it was it was really a tremendous show. It was even a better experience. I mean, honestly, everyone had you know smiles on, and it was really wonderful to see. Um, I did want to throw this out there because. The sports hobbyist with some of the periodicals I was able to buy, but Gary actually had, you can check me out on Instagram, Leighton underscore Sheldon, or it's Leighton dot Sheldon, I'm not sure. But anyway, he had, I think it's Card Collector's Bulletin. So I made a post from the convention, but check this out. He shows me um, a couple of different issues. And in particular, in the 60s, you could have bought T206s for 50 cents each including rare backs that were part of this. Uh, you could have bought 1952 tops high numbers for a dollar each. So get this, there was a 1961 clear basketball complete set advertised in the 1964 issue for $3.96. So this is my closing thought on that. I was at the show, I don't wanna name the auction house. I was at the front of the convention. It was not today, it was yesterday. I saw an auction house owner make a $20,000 offer on a raw, ungraded 1961 clear basketball set. So let's just do the math. What's 20,000 divided by $3.96? It's mind boggling. Yeah. So my point is, if you are looking to be entertained and you wanna maybe stay away from breaks and you can't buy any more singles because your significant other is going to kill you or throw you out of the house or whatever the case is. I'm telling <laughs> you, there is so much fun to be had, even if you can't buy them. Like Gary was letting me look at it as much as I wanted. However, I went back to try to buy it a few times and he said, you know, wait, I'm not going to sell them. So I came back again and I said, you know, listen, 
sorry to bother you, Gary, but my buddy, he's actually saying he'll pay more than me. And I thought I was psycho. And Gary's like, listen, Layton, I'm not selling him. Check this out. After that, he puts the NFS on both of his issues. And he literally puts it in his case. I'm like, you did that for me, didn't you? He's like, you're damn right. I'm not selling them. So <laughs> I had a lot of fun at the convention. I'm really looking forward to seeing you, Jeremy, long-haired Larry, Mark Trudeau, really a lot of great people that I haven't seen in quite some time up in Toronto. Right on. Yeah, can't wait to see you there too. Have a look at the private chat before you go, Leighton. Thank you for joining us for the spotlight, the vintage spotlight. We'll see you next weekend. We'll see you on, uh, we'll see you on Thursday. Thanks, guys. Nice seeing you, Mikey. Take care of you, Tom. Great to see you. Looking forward to seeing you guys next week. Sounds Thank you, Leighton. All right, let's run through some uh, let's run through some comments here. Uh, Jerry Petrie, thank you guys for all the hard work. Love the content. Thank you, Jerry. Good to see you, Dave Marone. I bought a great card off of Dave at a recent show. My uh, my Otto Graham rookie. He says he's he's in Strongsville right now. Biggest surprise was fewer young punks trying to rip you off. More honest quality people. That's a nice comment for Strongsville. Says he highly recommends the event for any vintage dealer. It was a very savvy crowd. The best and worst part, all the stuff I didn't want to sell, sold at full price. Paterno <laughs> Rookie Ball, Ice Cream Top, National Chickles, all the good stuff. Very good, Dave. Thanks for joining. We'll see you, Dave, next weekend. Robert Scott says, Gotta love Leighton's passion, what the hobby is all about. And Stuke says, I hear you, Leighton, recently bought a 76 SCD, Sports Collector's Digest. Great reading. Yeah, that could definitely be some fun for sure east coaster still having fun in the chat i see very good very good all right all right we've got sam genova is in the green room sam for has been on the show a couple times before he sets up with me at my booth at the expo he's my my booth partner and he loves expo sam you ready to come on He's giving me the nod. Let's bring on Sam, everybody. There he is, Mr. Sam Genova. Look at that, right leaning into the camera. He's got the Leafs hat on. You watched the game tonight, Sam. How'd that go for you tonight? Not not good. The, the same uh, same usual thing. You know, game one, uh, it's always a blowout, and the uh, streak continues. Streak continues. Hello to Mr. Manos. Uh, yeah, that's uh, that was a tough one. But listen, we, we've been talking for a while. We just had Leighton on. We've got Mikey. We haven't heard from Le Cartel for a few minutes, so <laughs> you keep on hanging in there. You're doing great, Aton. You're doing great, my guy. Um, Sam, what are you – the question I wanted to ask you was, like, what are you most looking forward to next weekend? And are you able to share why you almost couldn't make it to the Expo? So, for me, the Expo is about the collector's – um there's starts off with thursday night dinner it just sets the tone for the weekend and it's just become like a necessity in my life like i need to do it twice a year we've built great relationships jeremy you've introduced me to so many people because you know everybody um and it's just been really nice to have relationships with people out of expo and talk and text all kinds of collectors do deals together so it's just a great community. It's uh, it's a weekend with the with the guys, and uh, I don't live far from Expo. So for me, it's hop, skip, and a jump. Uh, it's 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 a weekend that I could not imagine not having in my life anymore. So it's it's special. It's a special weekend. I get to spend time with with you all weekend. Jokes, all the inside, you know, the nice talks we have, and um, you know, I'm just looking forward to it. I can't wait. So. I did get some bad news prior uh, last week. I got um, summons to court. Okay, for the twenty fourth. Uh, so next week, Wednesday, I got summonsed, and I thought to myself, "For what? What you saw, like for what? Summon for what? Just for 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 a court case. We you never know what it's about, but you just get the letter in the jury. mail. You haven't said jury duty, man. It was jury duty. Jury duty. Sorry, jury duty. <laughs> jury duty. <laughs> it right, way way. Canadian... You're like I'm being sued. It basically sounded like I'm being sued on <laughs> no, Wednesday. No, no, it's jury duty. And I don't Sorry. Know. <laughs> Sorry, I've been scarred by the whole thing for the last week. So I called Jeremy in a panic. I'm like, dude, I got this letter. I don't know what to do. Like, I can't believe it's Expo weekend. I'm bending so hard. Like this, just my luck. Like the one 
there's two weekends of the year which I enjoy, and it's Expo, and it's just like <laughs> it may not happen this week, this or it may not happen that I'll be there Thursday and Friday, but I'll definitely be on the weekend. So then. I was able to get out of it, so everything's good to go. So I won't be missing That's anything. Awesome. You know what I mean? That's awesome. Say a quick hello to Le Cartel. Le Cartel, you know, you know Sam from the show? Sam, I'm sure we physically bumped into each other at some point. Uh, yeah, I think the Expo. Expo. Yeah, yep. yeah, yeah. We don't physically know each other, uh, but definitely. See what you do now. I'll see you this. You, I'll see you this one. Yeah, you'll see each other Thursday night at the uh, at, at the Jack Astors event that I that I organize and. Mikey, say hello to Sam, and if you got to jump off, uh, please feel free to do so whenever you're ready. Yeah, I gotta get, I gotta get going soon to do some more work for the expo. But Sam, great to see you. It's been been a few months. Me and Sam were together in Quebec City to start the new year off, right? Uh, at uh, our first sport card expo in in Quebec City. So uh, good to see you again, and good to be showing with you again in in a, in a week. I, absolutely, it was a pleasure to always see you and. Uh... I saw you at the last show in uh, in Mississauga with you brought your little your your kiddo with you too, yeah. Um, so it's been great to uh, to see you on multiple occasions and uh, yeah, the pleasure is all mine. What can I say? I'm desperately right. trying to get my daughter into some kind of collecting. I drag her at the shows and card shops and be like, "Oh, how fun is this? You should <laughs> love this. We'll really enjoy doing this together." Hey, it looked uh, like she was having a good time, so. She does. She does. She does enjoy it. She does have a good time. And we, she loves it even more. We have a ton of neighborhood kids who actually like, they know I'm involved in the show. They come over. I always keep boxes of cards over for us to bust packs together. Uh, a lot of the times when the grades don't work out, I get a seven or an eight. Uh, it always becomes a good present for one of the neighborhood kids. So yeah, it, it is fun. Uh, and Aton, it was great hanging with you too, sir. I'm sure I'll see you very soon. Uh, for all of you guys, thank you for tuning in. Everyone, thank you for your comments. Set maybe East Coaster. You you could maybe grow up a bit. <laughs> but the rest of you, great. And uh, super stoked for next weekend. And thanks for Steve for, for giving us the opportunity to be part of this awesome thing that is the show. Absolutely. Awesome. Thanks, Mikey. Bye, we'll guys. see you soon. Talk soon, buddy. Yeah, Mike. Bye. All right. So let me uh, let me ask you this then, Sam. Because, you know, I can ask you, you know, what is it that you're most looking forward to? I now want to ask you, for people who are maybe coming for the first time uh, or, you know, haven't been for a while, what is like, if you have a tip or, and I'm you're next on, you're next on this one, Cartel, but first with you, Sam, if you had like one tip or one, and I don't want to, don't, like not the wear good shoes tip, something, and I'm putting you on the spot, no preparation, uh, any any kind of piece of advice or or just something that you would say to people, you know what, you might not know this or think about doing this, but uh, can you think of anything that you would like to share with people that you found maybe enhanced your experience? Yeah, I just think uh, come prepared, like have, uh, you know, the expo puts out a map where everything's laid out, uh, kind of have a, a plan where you're going to start and where you're going to kind of finish. Because uh, it makes things so much easier rather than scrambling between aisles, remembering where you saw something. And another thing is whenever you see from past experience, whenever you see a card that you like and you're like, OK, you know, and you're like, OK, let me take that spin and come back buy the card. Because when you do that spin and try to come back, that card, I can almost guarantee you is going to be sold. So if there's something that you see. The first time that you go around and you really want that card, grab it because you're going to really, really regret it. And it's happened to me every single expo, whether it's my good friend Jeremy buying the card, whether it's my good friend, you know, many other collectors. It, it just, it, it, you know, when you see it, you got to jump on it. So have, I guess, have a, a plan where you're going to start and, and how you're going to go through because it's it's a big venue. And it's easily to get confused where you remember seeing a card. And by the time you try to go back, I'm pretty sure it's going to be, it's going to be sold. And another tip is if you can come on a Thursday and if you can't come on the Thursday, definitely try to make it on Thursday. If you can't come on the Thursday VIP, definitely you got to come Friday. You definitely got to come Friday because yeah. all the deals are happening early. So that's like my best tip that, 
you know, someone told me, which Jeremy Probably shared me. this with me, you know, early on, and it 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 can be so that's the tip I would give anybody who's coming out for the first time. Yeah, that, that's my that's the tip I often give is don't think that card will be there after you do it after you do a circle, a circuit, and see if there's something you like more. You know, it likely will be gone. But we have a great comment from Phil right here. He says, full agreement. Don't walk around and then think. Don't walk around and think. Just buy it. Not talking regular young guns or anything like that, but a special card. And that's an important distinction he has there, which I think you're speaking to anyway. But if it's a that's special card, it probably won't be there afterwards. Shout outs to Phil. That's Phil, the loud collector from Ottawa. It's a good dude. That's him. Yeah. That, that's, him for, that's him for sure. Uh, Mark, uh, Sam. Sam's from the Toronto area. Uh, are you in the city or the suburbs, Sam? Uh, suburbs. He's in the suburbs. Uh, he's in the suburbs. Mark, YK wants to see some show inventory. We might be able to get to that, but Aton, I want to get to you and get your kind of, you know, if you have a tip or something that you think will help people uh, enhance their experience, what do you got? Well, the, the Sam took the, the words out of my mouth with the, with the, uh, the, the term, uh, look, it, it buy the card. Yeah. Like if, if it's a tough card and you're hemming and hawing, especially it's, it's especially tragic when you're hemming and hawing over like a few bucks and people do the loop to come back. And so often, you know, I'm in a position where I'm disappointing someone by letting them know, like you, sh you should have grabbed the card. If it's an, yeah. if it's some sort of short printed card, if it's the only PSA 10, get the card, like get it early, get it Thursday, get it Friday. It's not going to be, Oh, maybe I'll come back the next day. It, it always happens. So Sam hit the nail on the head with that one. That's going to be the main one. And that's the main one I was going to throw at you, but Sam already got ahead of me. Um, I think if you're, um, I think if you're a uh, attendee that's buying, make sure that you get around to all of the locations. I guess this is where the app may potentially be helpful. You, you want to get into those areas. I myself took me a while to get to certain areas of the show where I was able to find some UFC cards um uh the the there was an area where there was a lot more baseball get get around there to 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 find out what's out there um i would also say that for uh for attendees um just be wary of general etiquette and like soliciting and getting involved or trying to interject yourself into a deal at a table uh the vendors are there for a reason they've they've paid to be there uh, just the general kind of etiquette about trying to interject yourself into a deal. Um, wanted to throw that out there as well. Um, yeah, those I be... in, Chris. sorry, sorry, Aton. I just yeah. before I forget this, I just want to get this out because I saw someone talking today on some YouTube show, and they were talking about how you know if you're at the at the show and you're not a vendor, you know be really careful about trying to do deals with the other attendees at a vendor's booth. And some vendors will not like that. And they will call in show management and try to have you removed for trying to do that kind of, those kinds of, those kinds of, uh, of deals. So I'm not going to tell you to do it or not to do it. I'm just going to tell you to understand the etiquette and please proceed accordingly. Um, the other thing is, and this is one that does get under my skin is when someone comes up to my booth and, you know, whether they're going to talk to me or someone else who's just there and they just plunk their, their case on top of the showcase, I got five other people trying to look and now there's a section of cards that people can't even see. Um, put them, put your show, put your, put your, your uh, Zion case or whatever on the floor or ask me to put it behind my booth. I'll put it there for you. Just don't put it on the showcases and certainly not your drinks or your, well, food, I don't really care, but your coffees and your drinks, keep them away from the cards. Uh, cartel, I interrupted you there. I'm sorry. Please, uh, please continue. All right. You just, you just added, uh, added to it. There's, there's a, there's a way to go about things and there's a way that is stepping on, on people's feet and, and everyone should kind of have a basic idea of that, but you see a lot of new entrants, maybe some younger folks that aren't catching on to that. So, I mean, oftentimes as a vendor, it's an easy way to simply give them a little nudge or a warning, but like you said, it, it can escalate, uh, pretty quickly um the uh the the dropping the case that's something i talked about on the hockey card hangover dropping the the briefcase maybe, maybe on, that's where i listened to it today dropping it on on, on my display case like you're uh, dropping your briefcase after a hard day's work or something and that that definitely is is not good and by the way just to add to that i mean if you're if you're dropping your your case and 
kind of aggressively opening it up and you're, 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 you're kind of becoming the center of attention. I, I would remind vendors, there's a lot going on at a, at a singular time. And there have been instances where there's kind of like a distraction ploy going on. I don't want to, you know, go overboard on that sort of stuff and be like alarmist or anything, but it is a reality. And uh, like Sam said, get there Thursday, maybe Friday, Saturday is wild. Saturday is wild. I just, I'm sure Jeremy, you know, where the mint booth was and, and my booth and, just that short period, that short few feet trying to go between the two was just rammed. I'm just shoulder to shoulder. So that's something to be aware of. I don't want to discourage people from coming on Saturday. It's very exciting, but it is going to be packed. Just be prepared to uh, to wiggle around in a crowd. Yeah, exactly. All right. Yeah, great, great. So, and I want to thank the chat for some good tips. We're going to get to them for Irish Flyers. Neil says, if you're coming from the U.S., get Canadian dollars. Says, yes, most vendors will accept American. I know I will, but it helps eliminate the conversion discussion negotiation. So there's a tip from an American who was there last time and has an idea uh, what you're going to be in for when you come. 86 says, any local bars in the area to watch game four, the Bruins Leafs on Saturday night? Yeah, no shortage of places to watch the game 86 and you know swing by my booth say hello as i'm sure you will and i'm sure we'll be able to to uh you know if we don't end up at the same place uh at least you know catch up later sort of thing mr mano says have a plan 90s auction says yeah just buy it money's for spending and uh it you know the worst thing that can happen to you is that you walk into the show you see a card you want but it's at the first or second table you're like i'm not ready to spend all my money yet you walk around the show you're like that was the one I wanted. You go back to it and it's been gone three hours ago. Like it's always you know, gone. That, it's yeah, always it'll gone. Always be gone. So be careful. And, uh, and like Josh from nineties. And thank you to, uh, to nineties auctions for being a channel partner of mine here. Uh, we help them promote their auctions and check out, please check out nineties auctions.com guys. These guys are blazing a trail for a nice niche auction house and uh, good guys behind it too. Josh and John, good buddies of mine. Please check out 90sauctions.com. Colin Murray says, not every dealer will be set up Thursday. Our buying time, just saying Friday is the day. Okay, he says Friday is the day, the busiest day. And I mean, I love the Thursday and the Friday. I love all the days. So if someone asked me, guys, they just asked me the other day on DM on Instagram. He said, what's the best day to come for deals? And I said, well, okay. For deals, the best day is going to be Sunday. Like, I think that goes out without a doubt. But deals on what? You're now left with like what, I, what everybody else didn't want. So the best selection is Thursday, Friday. The best deals are probably on, on Sunday, but they're deals because it's the stalest of the inventory. So there's a, you know, you got, you got to find that. Bow. I say just come to come Friday and Sunday or, or the whole time, really. Luigi with a great tip here. Don't wear a sweater. Get super hot in the halls. So that's, that's a nice, nice tip there. Mr. Mano says, yeah, be thoughtful when you're approach approaching a vendor's booth with, with where you're putting your bags, where you're putting your coffee, your drinks, and just as well as are you encroaching on their business? Because the vendors are paying to be there with their booth. An attendee is not meant to be a vendor, but I'm, I'm never going to discourage transactional volume at a card show. There are places to do that. Some vendors might get upset. So Daniel A says, so annoying when a case is on the glass. Now, Daniel isn't a vendor, but Daniel's looking in showcases and he wants to be able to see them. I, when I'm at a show, when I'm at a card show, guys, and I'm walking the show floor and I'm looking at a booth and someone's got their, they, they're talking to the vendor. They got their, they got their briefcase covering up a quarter of a showcase. And oftentimes the, I'm, I'm trying to like do this. I'm trying to look at the cards. The vendor doesn't even, I'll just say, Hey, can I look under that, under that? Oh, sorry. They move it out of the way. What, you thought you were the only person here? I find that I find that slightly frustrating. Uh, Rage says totally agree about putting the case like that. It boils my blood as well. But that trying trying to sell to another customer at my table and it's all over for you, he says. Rage, Rage does not take kindly to all of that. Bobby Burrell says, mind dealers, be mindful of dealers' real estate. If you're going to talk to someone beside you, take it away from their table. Yeah, exactly. Uh, what I think is just the best approach for uh, an attendee who is not not a dealer for sure. Uh, another comment, guys, from Neil says, if you're looking up comps, step away from standing in front of the dealer's table. Don't take up real estate while people want to look, especially if it's if it's busy. If there's no one else there, don't step away. 
no one cares if you're looking at comps anymore. I think that worrying about, you know, having to be discreet about looking for a comp, we we vendors expect you to look up comps nowadays, I would say. So uh, that's a great point there, Neil. Thank you for that one. 86 wants to know, are you guys Upper Deck Diamond Dealers? Uh, Sam and I aren't. Aton, what, what, do you, what do you know about that? I mean, not myself individually. I think that's mostly the territory of, you know, the uh, large retail shops that set up at the show. Okay, there you go. Yeah, some of the some of the the LCSs that are the guys that actually uh, are allowed. I don't know that anyone and everyone's allowed to sell wax at these shows. I think you have to be uh, maybe approved for that. I'm not certain of that. Um, so I, I I'm not actually sure about that. That's I'm something I, I should have asked Mikey because you know there there's there are the people with the gold balloons and then there but there are also some tables with wax without the gold balloons for the upper deck promotion. So right. Exactly. All right. All right. Good. Yeah. Great questions from you guys. Great comments. Um, let me get to this now from a, from a personal collection standpoint, fellas, is there anything that you guys are looking to find at the show? Uh, Sam, let's start with you. Um, there's nothing specific. I mean, I always look for my limited logos if I can find them. Um, it's always something I'm, scrounging for i'm always looking for bury but i don't seem to get lucky finding any more of his stuff so look for forsberg sundin guys that i collect but to say specific looking for something no i'm just i'm going in with a you know wide open mind and let's see what we find i love that I, i love that approach that's my approach too i mean if i see a card that i need for one of my sets i'm gonna grab it but Yeah, I go out just looking for whatever catches my eye. And you never know. That's a good way to start a new side PC or a new project is you see a card. Oh, that's a shiny looking card. I like the looks of it. I like the aesthetic. Now let's go see what the checklist is like. Are there enough players? Maybe there's 50 cards and you only want eight of them. Well, great. Now you got a custom eight card checklist from that set you can chase. And maybe you get it all done at the show. Like I love things like that when when those things happen. What about you, Mr. Le Cartel? So, uh, you know, anybody that that knows me or follows me on Instagram or has seen my booth before, it's a a wide variety of stuff. And that reflects kind of my own interests. I am open to anything at all. Josh and I are actually similar that way. Um, As he mentioned on The Hangover, uh, he loves it when people show up with oddball items, memorabilia, comic books. I'm I'm exactly the same way. I, I love that stuff. I can't say I come in with a checklist or anything specific, like Sam said. Um, I love the fact that uh, a lot of stuff comes to me, which is really convenient. I, I'm there definitely to move. I have a lot of inventory, kind of mid-end inventory that people enjoy flipping through. So I'm there to sell. Uh, Josh mentioned, you know, as there a lot of vendors are there to buy primarily, and that's what, what he does. I, I'm there to sell primarily, but a lot of stuff comes to, to, my, uh, to my booth uh, for example, I'm big on UFC cards, as I have been since its inception, inception in 2009, and I've gotten some amazing stuff. Just people know that the cartel is into the MMA cards, and they just deliver it directly. I get fantastic deals. They know a lot of it is going into the PC. Um, I love it. It's 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 always uh, my every six month. I know that I don't have to do much in between. I don't have to buy too much on eBay because I know I'm gonna. Uh, it's going to be an embarrassment of riches when it comes to the the niche stuff. Um, I love uh, talking to the baseball vendors because, as we mentioned before, when Mikey was here, there's not a ton of them compared to hockey. So when I meet one, I want to befriend them. I want to have good conversations with them and pick up some items that are difficult to pick up on eBay in terms of the shipping, the customs. Um, so that's a great opportunity. So I look for baseball I look for uh, MMA, not just UFC, MMA in general. And uh, yeah, that's that's about it. In terms of walking the floor, it's all about you see the shiny, the shiny object. You want the shiny object. That's you see the shiny, you buy the shiny. You see the shiny, you buy the shiny. I want to shout out Greggy Boy on Instagram makes the comment that trade night will have the game on. So uh, that must be the Saturday night. So there's a Friday night trade night. There's also a Saturday night trade night. one of them, I believe, so so the 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 mint ink trade night is the Friday. Is that right, Cartel? I thought it man, I'm embarrassed. I thought it was this Saturday. 
thoughts. One, one, there's one Friday, there's one Saturday, and uh, one of them is also the one that is the CSC one, the Canadian Sports Card Group. There's their 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 event, trade night event, is also the Slab Sharks app release party. So Slab Sharks, Canada's biggest consignment seller uh, on, on the eBay platform, will be at the show. They will be collecting consignments, of course. They are releasing their their app, which is going to be great for uh, for their consigners and I'm guessing customers as well. And uh, so they're having a little app. Well, I shouldn't say little. They're having the app release party. And then, of course, there's a Thursday night event. That's the event that I've been organizing for. Uh, this will be 12 years now. It's a networking event. It's an expo kickoff event Thursday night. You know, everyone's invited. There is a capacity. Um, Upper Deck is uh, kindly sponsoring the event by providing appetizers to the to the event so we'll have like an appetizer table or bar kind of buffet set up and we'll bring it up you'll bring it out you know some of them at eight o'clock maybe some more at nine some more at ten that sort of thing so i got a budget to work with and we're gonna you know try to get everybody some uh some nice uh you know appies as the as the night gets kicked off so that'll be a lot of fun Jeremy, Mark, did, you, did, yeah. did you hear about my double uh, dinner at the last uh, get together? I wound up with uh, two two meals for the price of one. Yeah, that'll happen. That'll happen yeah. at these things for sure. For sure. Uh, Daniel here says uh, he means Sam is bang out, bang on about walking around after seeing a card you love and you decide to walk around. Brought up some bad memories for Daniel. He did say uh, here, sorry, he did mean Sam. <clears throat> yeah, Phil, Sam will be. At my table, uh, at my booth with me, uh, as has become the custom. Meanwhile, the cartel has his table, which is right beside, uh, It's I think you're 911 and uh, Josh is 913, 12 and 13, something like that. So you got it. You want, I'm myself and Sam are booth 733. Cartel through, through Hit 'em High are booths 911. Phil says, I got great deals from Sam when, Jer what, when Jeremy. Uh, was on stage when I was away from the booth. He was getting good deals at my booth from Sam. Is that is that is that so, Sam? Okay, good to know. Mister Manos is looking for a 1972 Topps Julius Irving. That's the rookie card. That's the ABA Julius Irving rookie. Beautiful card, actually, Mister Manos. If you can see, I got a painting of it right there. Look above Wilt, just above my <laughs> right. There's there's the Julius Irving rookie right there. There's a painting of it right there on my on my backdrop. All right, and then what do we got here? Uh, oh, Daniel also says, he says, I'm like Sam. I have an open mind when I go to the show. There are unicorns that I don't expect to see. And when I see those, then I want them. Yeah, I totally, totally get that. Buying tip from Bobby Burrell. If you really want a card, ask a dealer to see two or three. Never let them know your focus. Kind of play that, play the shell game, you know? Show interest in a couple of other cards when your main target is a different one. I'm, I've been known to maybe try that trick once or twice before too, Bobby. Love it. Good stuff. Have, let's start with you, Sam. Have you ever done that? Yeah. I mean, sometimes you try to do like, you know, even if it's like a package deal with a few cards and you, you know that if the price isn't going to be where you want to be, you know what your main goal is, right? There's always that one card that no matter what happens, that's the one you're going for. But I've done it where, you know, if, if I can get three or four cards at the deal I want, I'll package a deal and I'll do it. But otherwise, you know, there's always the one that I'm going for. So, yeah, it's definitely a, te a technique uh, that gets used often. But usually when I'm picking a card, like it's uh, it's something that I'm uh, interested, but depending on price, especially when you're doing a bigger deal. right? Card. I want to just say so Hobby News Daily has joined us on Instagram. I want to say hi to Danny Black, the man behind it. And that actually reminds me, I want to show you guys something that I just received. Danny, Danny, are you still there in the chat? Let me know if you're still there. And I'll, I want to show something to you and everybody else. Uh, but also, Greggy Boy let us know that Mint Inc. trade night is Saturday. The CSC, which is the app release party Friday. for uh, for Slab Sharks, is on Friday. So Friday night is the CSC event. Saturday is the Mint Inc. trade night. And then Thursday night is the event that I do. Now, uh Danny from Hobby News Daily hasn't responded, but I'm going to show you guys this thing anyway. It's a new product. There's a new, I don't know exactly who's doing it. They have a product. Uh, the, the, the name of the business is named after the product. They sent me one to see what I thought. Like they sent me one for free, said here. And of course, you know, they want me to show it on the show and I'm happy to do that. 
I, I really like this 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 unit, guys. I'm going to show it to you right now. I, I have it right here. It's called Slab Museums. Slab Museum. Look at this thing. It's beautiful. And I don't know. I don't. I don't know these guys really, but they sent me this one unit. This holds 20 slabs. The top is like uh, it's got the <laughs> magnets, and the slabs they just they just slide they just slide right in. It's cool. It's it's nice, and you know it's it's a beautiful way to store slabs. This is a 20 holder. They have another unit that is like twice as wide that holds 40. And so yes, that is my Wayne Gretzky atomic refractor in a beautiful tag 10 slab right yeah, there. Wow. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. So Jeremy, does that have that like its own grooves for the for each card to go in? Own slot? It certainly does. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's yeah, nice. it does. It does. Really? And it uh I don't know what they sell these for, but it's slab, it's probably slabmuseums.com. You guys can check that if you'd like slab it's Slab Museum or Slab Museums. I don't remember uh, which one it is, but this will hold, it'll hold tag, like you can see, but it'll hold your PSAs. It'll hold your Beckett's, I believe, probably. I don't know about SGC because they're, you know, they're bigger. Uh, they, I think they probably do because there's still, you know, there, there's still some, some space from the top there, right? And side to side, there's even, there's some space as well. Um, I have a Beckett slab right here. Let's put this one in. Yeah, the Beckett slab fits in as well. Now I can't get it out. Let me pull out the... the and I'm going to try... I'll just show you guys also um, an SGC slab. Oh, the SGC slab fits. SGC fits. And I'm showing you some bangers here, but sure. and the Mickey Mantle rookie in PSA fits as well. So... They all, all the slabs are fitting in this thing. And again, I'm, uh, this is not a sponsor or a partner of, of Sports Cards Live, just a, a beautiful, really, way to hold your cards. And I can definitely see myself having a few of these on my bookshelf with my cards in them. So, Slab Museums, guys, check them out. It's really nice of them to, to pass that along to me. What do you guys think of that? Cartel, what do you think? Of the Slab Museum? Yeah, yeah. It looks, it looks pretty cool. I, 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 uh, I, I dig it. I dig it. There's a lot of, a lot of new interesting products coming out geared also geared towards display, which is good. It's, it's, if you can, you can create something that's uh, going to help out with, uh, uh, with storage and, and, and the way that you're displaying your storage as, as opposed to the, uh, trademark, uh, you know, the boxes that are falling apart as every show goes on then you know i'm i'm right. all for it you know as opposed to this which is which is great this is very functional but for some special cards you know you put them out there yeah maybe you have some company over that isn't hobby related and they uh and you know now you can show them some nice, some nice cards. bring out bring out the good plastic for for the company you know for the bring company out. the good plastic exactly the good plastic for the company i mean that makes sense a couple comments here guys daniel a says have you ever been Standing near a, near a vendor's booth and a deal falls through and you approach the guy trying to sell after he walks away. He says, I picked up some great cards doing that. I don't have an issue with that. If, if, if a vendor walks away or a, a customer walks away from my table and I don't want their cards, I personally don't care if anyone else chases them down. I don't care. Now, the show promoters might say, well, you know, the vendors who are paying to be there should have that right first. But... I'm not the show promoter. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not the show police. So I'm certainly not going to pretend to be one, but I'm going to, you know, still, if you're doing it right while I'm there and I still want to buy a card and someone walks up and says, oh, I'll buy that for Well, I kind of am talking to him about it right now. So, you know, back off sort of thing. Right. I think that's, that's kind of a fair, a fair approach as well. Um, Sam, any comments? No, I think it's there. Everything you're saying is bang on, right? It's about etiquette. Like you know, you just you, you come to the table. It's some things I see. Just it's it's honestly it's mind boggling. Like people just I swear I think they they think they're the only ones that are there at the show. It's like it's unbelievable. Like when I'm when I'm going on my search and I'm on my hunt, we don't have that much time, and then, and it, it just it just it bothers me so much when people just block the front at like the front that they're just standing in front of the booths and they're just talking and it's like and I'm trying to you know, look for that card. I'm like, oh, what's that card in the corner? It's just like, 
you know, I mean, like just, you know, I don't know how, how to say it, but be, you know, courteous. No, yeah, courteous. be courteous. Know your yeah. surroundings. Like you're not the only one there. It's just, it's, it's, uh, and I've seen deals happen at our table that people come and they just, they kind of interfere with the deal and, and then they, they kind of work their own side deal, which I was like, I'm like, I, I'm almost, I, I'm, I'm the type of guy where it's like, I'm in embar- I'm so embarrassed that I, I don't even know how to say something. It's like, yeah. wow, that really just happened. So, you know, you guys hit it on the head. Like, it's, I agree with everything you're saying. Absolutely. Robert Scott says, always bring enough cash. There are ATMs on site, but sometimes not the most reliable. And what he means by that is they run out of cash. They run out of cash. Now, I think they've gotten a lot better at keeping those stocked over the years and as the hobby has grown. But still, there are banks right around the International Center. The International Center is the venue for the expo. And there are banks right around it. So you can literally stop on your way if it's open. You can stop on your way home if it's, you know, as long as it's open, whatever. But come with cash. You don't want to see something and not be able to buy it. Or, and the other thing is, you know, oftentimes, you know, in Canada, we have the EMTV, email cap money transfer. Uh, but most most of us have limits, like two to $5,000 a day, which only gets you so far these days at a card show. So Make sure you have cash or at least access to cash at the show. Emma Zhang is actually Justin Bode tonight, guys. Justin Bode in the house. What's going on, Justin? Always good to see you. Colin Murray says the new KSA slab should also fit into the old slab museum here. The KSA slab will will definitely fit in there too. So keep that in mind for your KSA slabs. And JT and the Doc say got a couple of nice PC cards from Sam and Amit at my first expo. Hope the expo is great for you guys. Thank you, JT and Doc. And I just want to mention, Amit was, uh, we invited him onto the show tonight, but he had to coach his kids hockey this evening, a late game. So he was unable to make it, but hopefully he'll be back for the pre-expo show in the fall. All right, what else? Mark says, I bought a card at a show from a customer, not at the dealer's booth. No troubles. Good to hear, Mark. Good to hear for sure. And 86 says, walk around like my 80, my 90-year-old Papu. Hands behind his back, small lean forward, and a small <laughs> head nod. That's definitely a good way to do it. YK says, you can get up to 25K limit for EMT. You can. That's not easy to do, YK. I was at my bank trying to do it, and uh, RBC doesn't get to 25K uh, on a personal account, unfortunately. At least not for me. I couldn't get there, and I tried. So, Anyway, okay. Guys, I'm just going to look at my notes quick, see if there's anything else, you know, for grading. Let's talk about grading for a moment because there are grading companies at the card shows. PSA will be there. They will not be grading on site this time. They will be back grading on site in November. They're not grading on site this time, but they are taking submissions. I'm not sure what Beckett's plans are. They'll definitely be there taking submissions. They always are. Uh, SGC, CSG, I just don't know. Tag grading will be there uh, represented by the uh, at the Slab Sharks booth, actually, taking submissions for tag at the Slab Sharks. So there will be some tag representation as well, as we've seen recently, but not like we'd seen the last few shows. Um, but, you know, the Expo is a great place to come for, to drop your cards off in hand to get graded or to drop them off, uh, you know, in person to a consignment seller, whether you're, whether you're using a Com C or a PWCC, or a slab sharks, you can drop off your cards at the show to the consignment sellers as well. So, Daniel A, good e- uh, good night to you. Thanks for joining. Colin does say that EMT is very slow on Sunday because the banks are closed. Yeah, you, I I'll have people guys buy a card for me at my table and they'll send me EMT, but I don't give them the card until I receive notification that I got the money, and that can take up to half an hour sometimes. It depends if you use what bank each of you use. If you use the same bank, it's pretty much instant. But if you don't use the same bank, it can take up to half an hour or so. So be prepared for that. Don't buy your last card of the day five minutes before the show closes with EMT. You might not be able to leave with the card. So that's something to consider as well. Any thoughts on kind of the grading activity at the show, guys? Aton, do you have do you tend to do grading while you're at the expo? Yeah, you know, it was a it was a well-loved tra- tradition back in the day. Uh, maybe you guys know what I'm talking about of uh, coming back from the Beckett booth with a stack of uh, card saver ones that have gold labels on them. 
that that was always a tradition back in the day, back when um, maybe Beckett had a bit more relevance and value. Uh, Beckett did release a price list, Jeremy. Uh, they are going to be slabbing on site. Oh, and good. I, good for them. And I will tell you uh, that that's great. They're going to see a lot of activity. Guys, we are going to see a tidal wave of bedards that uh, people are going to be buying them on the floor and making a beeline to Beckett. So I'm, I'm going to give people the heads up. The line was all right. I think I went on a Friday, the last show. It was fairly quick. They were fairly organized. Um, you know, you got, I was kind of filling out the form while I was in line, but it was, it was a decent experience, man. Uh, Jeremy, uh, I think it was on the Friday as I was walking back to my table from that area where they were grading, where Be uh, Beckett was and PSA was, I got a ding on my phone and my card was slabbed and ready. Um, so there was a lot of appreciation and chatter for that at the show that, that they were going very quickly. People were getting some great results. Um, Beckett, I think, had a huge opportunity at this show to maybe shore up a little bit of um, goodwill amongst collectors, what with PSA not slabbing at the show. And I think a ball was dropped by increasing prices like they did because mm -hmm. it's significant. I just would have thought to myself, and again, I'm someone who has so many high-end cards in Beckett slabs. If, I, if you ever hear me criticizing them on The Hangover, or in person, I'm doing it from a place where I want them to, you know, succeed. I want there to be a competitive grading marketplace. I want to see tag have value, Beckett have value, PSA have value, SGC. I love SGC for quick service and uh, vintage. Um, but man, Beckett could have done something here to gain a little bit of goodwill. Nonetheless, they will be yeah. taking in a lot of cards. Yeah, I mean, listen, I, I see it. I see both sides of that. Number one, you know. A, they're, they're, they, it's a business. They have to have profit and margin. They have to make sure that they're, you know, so I, I'm not, I'm not saying, Oh, raise your prices through the roof. No. I mean, you want to be, you want to be customer friendly, but they, they do have to try to make money at the same time. So it's, I'm sure it's a tough balance for them. And, you know, but maybe you're right. Maybe what they should have done is said, let's use this as like a loss leader sort of thing. Let's go there. Let's. Uh oh, Oh boy. Well, that's Let's, this is a, a different situation uh, <laughs> to have the host have an issue. Frozen. You're freezing that's, up. That's usually, that's what about usually now? my area of expertise. You're, you're, we you heard you briefly, frozen. Jeremy. He's just stealing my gimmick. And it go <laughs> figure the one time Tied? I've got my stuff together. <laughs> Amongst yourselves for stack. Jeremy's there you beautiful go. smiling face there. Yeah. Almost get off Netflix. Talk amongst, your... talk amongst yourselves Jeremy. if you can. can you Sam, did talk, you talk... have any uh, any thoughts on uh, the grading, on the Beckett, on that sort of thing? Um, I graded a few cards for a buddy of mine at the last show, and I thought the pricing was pretty fair. I mean, I'm not um, – because I, I collect a lot of, like, cup cards and they're thicker i'm not really big on grading yeah. but um yeah it's kind of sad to hear that grading on site was was a great opportunity the last show they were uh, they were slammed they were so busy and just to hear that i don't know what the pricing is the increase but by the sounds of it it's pretty substantial it's significant yeah so that's sad like i mean you you you're gonna be there you're gonna be busy i understand everybody's got to make money but you know, it's yeah. I totally agree. It's it's a, I think it's a a lost opportunity. They could have um, you know done a lot better. You know. But by, well, by the way, I love what Sam just said because um, I'm always putting it out there, and people are wondering where I'm coming from. But a lot of new entrants that are dealing with uh, Black Diamond um, Cup, they're looking at these higher end upper deck products. I I assure them that the really high end Cup collectors, and I know so many of them. They're not looking to grade these 180 point cards that are difficult to grade. They're putting them in one touches. They look beautiful, um, but everyone's just in such a rush. I, again, we spoke about this on the, the hockey card hangover. Uh, everyone wants to grade everything. They want to grade on mass. They don't think something's worth its salt if it's not in a, a slab of plastic. It's such a great example. 
hockey card collectors that are into the cup, sure, it's great if you've got a BGS 9.5 or, you know, perish the thought because you don't see very many, a PSA 10 um, cup card. But they're, they're, they're difficult to grade. And sometimes it's not even about them being difficult to grade. It's about the displayability, how beautiful the card is. doesn't need a further frame. And that is a real thing. Right. And I'm sure Jeremy knows as well. A lot of cup collectors just want the RPAs. They, they love them. It doesn't have to be slabbed out. Yeah. Okay. Can I just chime in there for a second? Yeah, I know. Yeah. Like a lot of us cup collectors uh, and Jeremy as well is when they end up buying these cards that are graded, mo like uh, the collectors that I know, a lot of them end up breaking the slabs and taking them out of there to just to put it in a one touch. Yeah. Yeah. So that's kind of like, our mindset per se, because you know, I'm, I'm not a big grader and I, I love the cup card. So yeah, for me, even when I'm buying it, like, you know, Jeremy, do you, do you put an like extra value when a, when a card, like a cup cards graded? I mean, yeah, you put a little bit, but no, I don't, I don't at all. I almost just prefer it isn't because I don't want to pay the premium that the seller feels entitled to because the card is great and they feel entitled to it because there's probably a comp out there right so they so that makes sense i i don't say that in a derogatory way i'm just like damn i wish i wasn't graded because i want to pay raw for this card and i'm probably going to break it out anyway because it doesn't fit with the rest of the cards i have raw from that set or in that collection hockey collectors are, are not as integrating the patch auto cards the thick cards as the other as basketball and football and maybe even baseball collectors are I think a lot of the grading of hockey patch cards, thick cards, has happened in recent years. It's it's almost a newer thing for for hockey collectors and, and the hockey part of the, the hockey segment. So, I'm not a big fan of it uh, for the thick cards. Not to say I couldn't change. I do. I will tell you, I I did pick up a couple graded thick cards at the at the national last year. One came in a Beckett holder. The other came in a PSA holder. I really like the PSA holder for thick cards. I was yeah. really impressed. I just think it's a I like it better than the, than the Beckett holder. The Be it's just too bricky. The Beckett holder, the PSA holder for thick cards. I really like it to be honest. But but that, at the same time, if I've got a, one of my PCs that has a hundred cards in it and they're all raw, I'm, I'm cracking out the ones that I that I buy graded. And I'll only buy them graded if I need them or I love the patch or whatever it is. But I'll you know and it, what I should say is I'll only buy it at a premium if I really want the card. I really like the particular patch or i really need it for my set so that's kind of the way i roll um that way yeah um okay 86 says what about paypal venmo and cash app so very important to know that canadians we do not have venmo or cash app up here in canada uh, 86 and everybody else so as a vendor i cannot accept venmo or cash app but we can accept paypal the only issue with paypal is now you got to figure out you know, are you going to go friends and family to skirt the fees, mm -hmm. which a lot of vendors won't do. Some will, but a lot won't. Or are, are you going to work out that 3% fee? You know, or is the fire going to pay it or is the seller going to, going to just absorb it? Or do you split it that now you got to get into that discussion. So, um, I, you know, PayPal is not going to, it's not going to kill a deal. I'll put it to you that way, but it may cost you an extra 3% on the, on the purchase. But again, it's important to note that Venmo and Cash App are just not, we, we, we don't we don't have those up here. We have EMT instead, which is the best of all of it because there's no yeah. fees and you can just transfer money between banks with people. It's actually pretty awesome. And I, I apologize for disappearing. I don't know what happened there, guys, but thank you for covering for me while I was gone. We are at the two hour mark. So we're going to, we are going to wrap this up, fellas. Uh, we did have a question before. Could we show some of our inventory uh, I don't mind if we take a few minutes and do that. Do either of you have any cards that will be at the show with you that you want to show? Uh, Sam, you're shaking your head no. I uh, don't before. know. Um, all... Colin does say he has a credit card machine. Many vendors, he says, will take a credit will take a credit card. I will not be set up to take credit card, but many will. So that's a thank you, Colin, for that. That's really important to keep in mind as well. So 86, take note of that. And Justin Bode says, Jeremy just beat up the graded original cup card situation. Uh, I didn't mean to to do that to beat it up, but uh, you know what I mean, Justin. I think you do. Simon four six six cards from the YouTube channel by the same name, former guest on Sports Cards Live as well. Uh, says we'll see you all at the expo. We will see you there, Simon. Looking forward to it. Brendan Ryan says show them Bedards. You know I don't own a Bedard card, Brendan. You should know that by now with me. 
Um, Aton, do you have any cards you'd like to show before we uh, wrap up? I uh, I didn't really come prepared to, to show anything off. I was trying to, hopefully, I was trying to get into things and see if I could find um, something unique, like some sort of a, an MMA piece that, that I have. But uh, yeah, let's uh, let it be a surprise when people visit booth uh, 9911 and 913. Um, I'll have I'll have everything out at that point. So, yeah, I mean, I I'll have... leave it to Jeremy. Jeremy's got the the hot sauce there. I've got a few. I'll just show a few cards here. These are, you know, talking about cards that I broke out of graded slabs or these uh, these cup base patches. Like I collect these, and I had to buy a bunch of them graded, and I broke them all out of the slabs. Mm. Um, so, but actually, not these particular ones. These are ones that I've upgraded. So these are going to be at the show with me. Uh, available for you know sale trade sort of thing. Um, there's this there's a Solani right there, Sergey Fedorov. Uh, there's a Ron Hextall. There's a nice Joe Sakic. This one's from 2012. All these are from the first year Cup 2005. So I'll show you some of those. I'm gonna have a collection of these uh, these 96 run for the cups. I've got most of the cards from this set um, that will be there at my booth as well. Not graded, as you can see, but definitely grading candidates. Uh, a nice Martin St. Louis honorable numbers will be at my table. Uh, this Borea Salming limited logos will be at my table. Just showing you a, a handful. This Timu Solani uh, prime colors will be at my table. I haven't had time to price anything yet. Uh, I got a bunch of these rookie reviews. Various players and, and, and years will be available I'm, I'm, I'm letting go of some Dale Howard Chuck cards. So, uh, for example, this dual scripted sticks of Howard Chuck and Solani will be at my booth. Nice. Uh, as, as well as, uh, what else should I show? Here's a really nice Brendan Shanahan ultimate, uh, ultimate premium swatches will be at I my booth those. as well as a few others from that set. Yeah. I mean, I'll, I'll stop right there. Keep a bit, the rest of it a surprise, but, um, I'm bringing, I've got really two boxes of inventory for this show. One of them is like, you know, raw cards. This thing is full. Like this thing is full to the brim, as you can see. So that, this will be with me at my booth. And the other box that will, that is coming with me is this, in this graded card box. And I'll just show you, it's, it's also coming with slabs and then a, a small section there of, of raw cards too, that I've got in there. So that's, what's coming with me. These two boxes uh, I'll have some other odds and ends, but for the most part, that's what will be at uh, at my booth. Sam will have a showcase at the booth as well, and he's always got killer stuff too. So you definitely want to come by and visit uh, myself and Sam at booth 733. Definitely Irish Flyers. Yes, you saw the Lindros run for the cup. Mark Santucci, thank you so much. Um, I will not have very many old cars. I don't know, Mark. Actually, I might have some. I'm, I'm undecided if I'm bringing any vintage to sell there. Jeff McMahon, thank you very much for that. YK, thank you. Sorry we didn't get more in depth with that, but I appreciate you holding out and being here. Guys, we're going to wrap up. Any final comments, questions, announcements, anything, you know? I'm, I'm hyped for, guys, I'm hyped. I'm more hyped now than I was two hours ago. I can't wait for Expo. I can't wait to see you guys. I can't wait to see everybody in the chat, but I want to give you both the chance to kind of say some parting words before we wrap up. Uh, let's start with you, Sam. Final comments, please. Yeah, I mean, it just it's it's gonna be an awesome weekend. Um, you know, I'm looking forward to seeing everybody, like I said, and um, I can't wait to see what kind of cards are gonna be there and doing deals with everyone. And and like I said, starting the show off Thursday night, the dinner that you hold, that's always amazing for collectors to meet. And then it's just uh, smooth sailing from there. It's a lot of fun. Uh, I come home from nights, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and I have trouble sleeping because I've got the jitters. I'm so excited. So it's just like, I don't know, a little kid at a candy store. You know, it's 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 an awesome weekend with the guys and, and just uh, just a great time. So looking forward to seeing everybody. Yeah, uh, same here, Sam. Thanks for coming on the show tonight. Always good, always good to see you, my friend. 86 says, great show, everyone. Super, super hyped. Safe travels. God bless. Yeah, 86. Looking forward to seeing you at the show. And Greggy Boy on Instagram also says, can't wait to see everyone. And put on an ACDC Thunderstruck. Put on ACDC Thunderstruck. That'll hype you. Yes, it will, Greggy Boy. 
That's true. Mark Santucci gives us five out of five stars on the night. Mark, thank you so much. You're all you're such a such a great chat member and loyal viewer. Always grateful for you and everybody else who comes out every week to to hang out here on the SCL channel and in the chat. Uh, Robert Scott says, I'll be shopping vintage and pre-war baseball. See you all there. Robert Scott, looking forward to seeing you at the show. Be sure to stop by and saying hello to me. I have a new banner, guys. I got a banner made. It just came the other day. It's in the box over there. So now we got a we got a banner for the for the booth, which will be pretty cool. Cartel. Look, cartel. Final words over to you. And then we are going to sign off for the night, everybody. Oh, I just want to say I love seeing a young gentleman uh, discover ACDC. Greggy boy, I'd love to give you some ACDC CDs, but I, I don't know if you'd know what to do with them. Um, guys, the expo is an astounding, wonderful event every six months that we all look forward to. I look forward to seeing everybody. It's such a great time. At the end of the day, it boils down to, for me, uh, having been a young spectator and then all these years later, now I'm vending. It's just all about how long can I stay at the show? That's really what it boils down to. That's that's how you segue into becoming a vendor because you realize I can stay there all day for these these four days. Really excited to see everyone. Uh, as you guys may have heard, I am on a new podcast, The Hockey Card Hangover. It is made for the peoples, and we're very happy that the peoples seem to be checking us out. We're a podcast that people watch. And uh, you can find us at The Hockey Card Hangover on YouTube, on Instagram as well. We are working to get on Spotify, but understand that Josh and I are hobby cavemen. We are learning about the technology very slowly. We will be upgrading our, our cameras, our audio. Just give us about three to five years, something like that. Um, I, just and, say, uh, I just want to say a quick hello to Rodman Martinez on the in the Instagram chat. Rodman, always a pleasure to see you. Cartel, please, yeah, I'll let you wrap up your thoughts and, uh, we'll do some comments we, and we'll wrap it up. We are currently running a giveaway for a box of 9091 Opeachy Premiere, the set that everybody knows and loves and remembers and recalls. Nice. We're giving away a few things, actually. So check us out. Check out the uh, the Sports Card Cartel feed on IG. I will constantly be assailing you with weird, wacky stuff, um, strange occult symbolism, um, uh, veiled uh, threats and uh, veiled um, shout outs. Some people caught on to the fact that I actually, uh, Jeremy, you know, I have the weird, uh, 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 strange uh, symbolism in some of my stories. And if you follow closely, you can actually make a lot of money in the stock market. And, uh, and of course, my wonderful selection in music. So check me out, check out the hockey card hangover. Uh, we love the hobby. We want to make the hobby a little cooler. Um, you know, generic, boring content is not cool. Fraud is not cool. Um, bad investment advice is not cool. We want to make it a little cooler, more inclusive. Please remember that when you're at the expo. There's a lot of kids around, a lot of families. Watch your mouth sometimes. Yeah. It, it ends up being like a big locker room. Um, despite the comment earlier, there are a lot more women coming into the hobby. Let's make it uh, a nice, clean, safe space for everyone, not just for women, right? Just for everyone. Um and yeah, I look forward to seeing everyone. It's going to be fantastic. Well said. Lots of, lots of, I, I love that way to wrap it up, uh, Cartel. Really important things there about just keeping it clean. This is a, this is a family event. And, uh, you know, we want to, we want to, we want to cultivate this hobby, not find ways to push people out of it. Let's bring them in because we love it so much and how much it's enhanced our lives. And I think we feel it will enhance other people's lives as well. So, Good stuff right there. Yankees fan, thank you. Safe travels. We appreciate that. Colin Murray says, favorite two weeks of the year. No doubt we got the Edmonton show a week later. Mr. Manos, thank you so much. Thank you for joining the show tonight. Appreciate you being here and appreciate the, the wishes for a great show. Justin Bode, thank you, sir. Justin, why, are you good? why don't you come to the expo, buddy? I, uh, I miss you, buddy. I miss you. It'd be good to see you again. All right, guys, thank you, everybody, for joining. I want to thank we – ha we've had uh, – We've had about 40 people on Twitter or X watching us tonight. Uh, Instagram's been popping over there. People coming in and out. And, of course, everybody on YouTube. Josh from 90s Auctions. See you soon. I just saw your DM on IG. We'll definitely chat. Guys, thank you to Cartel. Right there. Right there. Thank you to Sam. Right there. Thank you to everybody in the chat. You guys, you guys hang tight for one moment. To everyone in the chat again, thank you so much. No sports cards live next Saturday night. I'm at the Expo. No sports cards live on May the 4th. I'll be at the Edmonton Expo, but we'll be back on May the 11th 
I will be live tomorrow night here on the channel for the PWCC weekly hockey auction ending watch coverage. And then on Monday as well for the MC Mondays showcase auction. That's going to be crazy uh, what they have going off Monday night on the MC Sports Cards uh, eBay store. So that'll be a lot of fun. So back-to-back shows tomorrow and the next day for me. And then it's going to be off until uh, the 29th. Actually, I'll be back the 29th for another MC show and then off the weekend after. And we'll be back regular after all of that. So thank you everybody for continuing to tune in. Appreciate you all being here. And with that, this episode of Sports Cards Live for April the 20th, 2024 is now over.